All right, looks like I'm live. How's it going, guys? So I'm about 15 minutes late tonight. I just had so much stuff in my car to bring in because I got some stuff in the mail and going to show you guys some previews for some things that I'm going to be featuring in some new videos and whatnot and kind of show some of it to you guys tonight. That's how I usually like to do it, you know, show everyone that's hanging out in the stream what's going on so I can get you guys as feedback and just to give you guys a little sneak preview because you guys are the coolest ones, right? So let's see who's in here. We got Mateo. How's it going, man? Vanessa Kitty. Nice to see you, ma'am. And we're going to wait a second for more people to get in the chat here. But basically, I've got a few Millsurp things that I'm going to show tonight and a couple more accessories for my Taurus G3 and G2C. I know a lot of you guys are always looking forward to those types of guns. So I know what's happening. Everyone's coming in all at once because even though I put these YouTube streams up, like a few minutes in advance, they just don't send the alerts. So sorry about that, guys. If I had a better way to make sure you guys got the actual alert on live, I would, but I think it's just something YouTube does. So anyways, how's it going? Uh, Big Hunani, David Dobos, and Scott Gaines. How's it going, guys? From Cleveland, Ohio. All right. I won't hold it against you. I'm in Michigan, but Ohio is fine. I like Ohio. Actually, my daughter was born in Ohio, so Ohio is a good state, too. Here, how's it going, Tori? And she's saying, yep, I just got the alert. So, yeah, I guess what I should do from now on is just start my stream five minutes in advance and just sit here for a minute and whatever. <laughs> it's YouTube. I guess we should feel privileged, right, according to them, that they even allow deplorables like us even on here, right? Isn't that what it really comes down to? Because they'd probably just not even rather have us talk about the things we do, like freedom and guns and liberty and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, Francis is here. How's it going, Francis? Yep, you did see a 1895 Nagan in the thumbnail. That's sitting right over here. And, oh, you had to say you've got one too. Cool, cool. Yep. I've got the Nagant and a couple other accessories to show you guys for it. Just thought I'd bring it out. I don't know. Just because. It's not my favorite, favorite gun in the world, but they're pretty cool. Scott Gaines is in Kentucky. Cool. Poor conservative. He's from Michigan, and he's from Michigan, which is a good thing, guys. But for you new guys, I just have to reiterate, okay? So Michigan, you know, looks like a hand, right? So, you know, I'm over here on the right side of the state. Poor conservatives on the wrong side of the state, okay? So, yeah, he's all right, though. He's all right. In fact, actually, guys, conservative. As much as I love to rag on him, he's actually a great guy, just so you guys know. But he, like, totally hooked us up. So what I'm going to do is say hi to a couple more people and start off with something that you guys are going to be really happy about, and we get to thank poor conservative for it because I'll get to it in one second. We have Raphael Davis here. How's it going, Raphael? Tree guy, what's happening, tree guy? When I take my little break in a little bit, please remind me, dude. I wanted to show you that chainsaw, and last week I got distracted. It's just right over there through those doors you guys can't see in the other shop. But I really want to show you my um, a couple of my little saws and see what you think, man. So just please remind me because I totally blew you off last time, and I would never blow you off because I like you, man. So don't think I was being a jerk last time. I really wasn't. Um, let's see. Edward Kent. What's happening, Edward? Nice to see you, man. I've seen you in the comments quite a few times. Good to have you. Nice, nice. Uh-oh, Raphael Davis. He's doing good considering the wife has seen the AR. Well, I guess it was better than it could have been because you're, you're here, right? So as long as you've got a pulse, <laughs> sounds like you manage it pretty well, right? Matt Morrison. What's happening, Matt? How you doing, man? Matt likes some mill serps. Don't go anywhere, Matt, because I have something that I know specifically you're going to like and probably the rest of you. And it starts with an AK and it ends in a 55. I'll give you guys that much of a teaser. I'm going to start filming my Hungarian AKs that I've been wanting to for a while. And I'm going to start with the very first one, if that tells you guys anything. So, yeah, I'm going to show you guys the Nagant revolver in one minute. But first, check this out. So this is going to be a video I'm going to do. And 
poor conservative is going to do a video on his channel. So before I even show this, here's what I want you guys to do. I'm sure most of you guys know who poor conservative is already. He's probably more popular in here than me. But if you don't, you can click next to his name. There's like those three little dots here. Okay. And when you click on the dots, one of the options is going to be that you can go to his channel. You can right click and open it in a new tab or however you guys do it on your cell phones. I'm not sure exactly. So click on his, go to his channel, subscribe to him because he's going to be doing a video on what I'm about to show you guys. And I want to thank him. So G2C, I did my video just last week showing you guys, hey, it doesn't fit my Streamlight TLR1. Sorry. It also does not fit this original PL Mini Valkyrie. Okay. All right, these do not fit on the Taurus G2C. However, they do fit just perfect on the Taurus G3. Well, here was the reason, right? We have a full-size Picatinny rail. Now, this is standard, you know, mill standard 1913. And it is also on the G2C, and then this is the G2S. But there wasn't enough room from front to back. Now, here we're good, G3, right? I'm just kind of bringing everyone up to speed real quick that didn't watch my video last week. But we can't put it on this G2S because see the little slot that has to hook in? We're bottoming out on the trigger guard before we can even get it on the rail. Okay? G2C is the same thing. So I'm like, hey, man, if anyone knows anything that will fit these, like, I really need to figure out a light, right? And a laser. So this is where poor conservative comes into play. He told me all about this. And this is actually an optic. An optical laser, rather, not an optic, but an optical laser and a flashlight combination. Okay. These are Tacticon armament. And please, guys, I'm not, I, I am copying off of him, but I'm trying to give him credit. Please go over to Poor Conservative if you're not already subbed. He's definitely, definitely going to have a video on his channel when he gets the time. I know he said he doesn't have much time to do videos. That's why I'm going to show it on my channel just because everyone's going crazy. But I definitely want you guys to go there and check out his video when he does it because it's going to be a better video than mine. But check it out, guys. This little Tacticon, let me flip it the right way here. This is a 220 lumen light with a green laser built in. Seems pretty easy to use. I just opened this up today. Here's our light. You know, I have a bunch of overhead lights in here, so it's hard to, you know, really see how bright this light really is. But it's 220 lumens. Pretty good, right? Yeah, I did get it quick, poor conservative. And like Vanessa Kitty said, you don't have to believe me. Just believe her. Go check out the poor conservative. I really want you guys to go there because here's the thing. He told me about this. I'm not stealing the video idea from him because he was pretty clear to me the other day, man, I just don't have time to do videos right now. So I'm going to show it, but I really want you guys to go there too. You guys know what I'm saying. He's a friend of mine. But yeah, check it out, guys. 220 lumen light. When I do my actual review of this, I'm going to go through where you guys can get it. I'll try to find a link that's approved through you know, YouTube with all their stupid rules. I don't want to really do too much because I could get in trouble, right? With the wrong links. I don't know. Does a laser pop up? How do I do a laser? On here where you guys can see it. I don't think a laser really picks up to the camera, does it? All right. There's the laser. That's better when I take the light off. So a green laser. Pretty nice. And then the light is going to be continuous. You click it one more time, it's going to strobe. Click it again, and it goes off. So, yeah. Now, this is going to fit. From what I understand, I literally just opened this up five minutes ago. Poor conservative is wondering how quick I got it. Well, I had to send one of my people all the way across the country to grab it real quick, okay? So, I got in my private jet, had one of my staff members go out there and grab it, and it got it here that quick. Do you guys believe me? I'm just kind of messing around with this right now, guys. Now, you have to aim these lasers, right? These are like any other sight. The laser is a sight. So, but yeah, look at 
I don't have it dialed in, but they give you like a couple little Allen wrenches with it and all that. There's adjustments where you can adjust the windage and elevation of the laser. Oh, that looks weird in the camera lens. Is that messing with you guys? I don't want to mess my lens up too much. I heard you can mess up a lens by putting a laser in it. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, what do you guys think? Is that pretty cool? This is my G2C. Poor conservatives. Awesome. This is a, somebody was asking the brand. This is called Tacticon. Um, Tacticon Armament. Does that show up there? From what I understand, veteran-owned company. I'm going to do a little more research before I do my actual regular video, you know. Yep, like poor conservative saying the laser is adjustable, windage and elevation. They give you the little tools, okay? These are rather affordable by... This is just a raw, raw, raw look, guys. This is like a pre-unboxing. I'm actually going to do like an unboxing, if you will, video, like a regular, you know, short video on it. I'm going to fool around with it a little more. It came highly recommended. This company gets great feedback, but I want to test it just a little bit before I would even come close to recommending it. And that's not because I have any reason to believe it's not good. It's just, you know, before I would ever tell you guys, like, you should probably get one or you might want to get one. I want to try it out a little bit, right? But so far, my very, very initial thoughts are this thing's pretty cool, you know? I would note that it charges with USB, which is cool as heck. It comes with this little thing right here. We've got, you know, it's different than the old lights, but look, you put your mini USB, micro USB, micro USB right here, and then it's just got a little magnetic charger, and it actually sticks right on the bottom of it. So... Anywhere you've got USB, guys, and they do give you the little, you know, a little USB cable. You can plug this into your, you know, you guys know, into your car or your house, USB charger, and even gives you a little home USB. So you got everything you need here. And if you're anything like me, you've already got USB cables all over the place in your truck or whatnot, right? So it's actually pretty cool, you know, rechargeable battery with the magnet. You guys, you guys get the point, right? Plug your cable in here. Magnetic. Like I said, this poor conservative is a pretty smart guy. No, I keep shouting him out, guys, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but you're going to have to deal with it because he really, really came through to tell me about this. I, I, I told him, and I, I've been telling all you guys, like, I'm struggling here. Like, I'm really trying to go through and do as good of a job on my channel with these guns as I can, and people keep asking me, what's a light and laser combo that we can afford? And I was just coming up empty handed because I guess you can't be good at everything, guys. I'm, I'm into a lot of mill serps. I know a lot about guns. I'm just not like super into the lights and lasers. You guys know what I'm saying? Like, of course I have a light on my bedside gun. Completely, completely agree with always having a light when you can, but I don't have like 25 different lights. So uh, David Medina just popped in. What we're talking about is this cool little green laser and light combo that will fit your Taurus G2C or your G2S. But don't really worry too much, guys, if you're just coming in and missing anything, because every single thing pretty much I'm talking about tonight is just little teasers for future videos. So if you missed the 30 second little thing right here, okay, then you're going to get like a five minute video, but knowing me, my five minute video is like 12 to 15. So you'll get a 12 to 15 minute video minimum on this soon. So don't sweat it too much guys. If you missed anything. Okay. And one more thing, and I'll stop boring you guys, but if poor conservative doesn't get at least five more subs out of here tonight for hooking us all up, I'm not going to show this light at all. Is that a good ultimatum? <laughs> I'm messing with you guys, but I'm actually being serious. I'm just I'm just being serious in a friendly way, right? Let's see who else has popped in here. Jeremy Wilson. What's happening, Jeremy? I have something for you, Jeremy. I'm going to show it to you. I just got from my buddy Bloody Wheels, guys. I want to see a couple more really cool things for the Taurus G3 I got from him. And I have a question for Jeremy Wilson specifically.
All right. I've got the G2 marked and then the Bloody Wheels logo one, Jeremy. Tell me which one you want, and I'm going to get it out in the mail to you. So, Jeremy Wilson, send me your address in an IG message. Send me a personal instant message with your address and tell me whether you want the blue one or the red one. I'm going to guess you're going to want the red one, but I don't really care at all which way. You just seem like a guy that would like red, but pick the blue one if you like that. I don't care. So, Jeremy Wilson, just send me a message with your address and which color. I'm sorry to bore you guys with all that. It was just easier than me sending him a message. Although I did send away my giveaway, and one of the four people, three of the four people, I've already got their info. Dauntless Defense, if you're in here, yours is on the way. I know Shojas and who's the other guy? Ramon Nieves. They've already received theirs, and they were really happy. But the fourth guy never responded back who I picked his name. So I'm going to give him another week. And if not, I'll give this away next stream to someone who wants it. This is a SIG P226 to G2C adapter. But I'm going to give him one more week. Tried to give it to the guy, but he hasn't gotten back to me yet. So, All right, let's see who else has popped in here. I saw a few more people just a second ago. And if I miss someone, just say hi to me again. And if you go at 2AEDU, it puts it in orange so I can see it better, right? Um, Let's see here. I said hi to David already. Ninja Scout, what's happening, Ninja? Beretta Man, what's happening, Beretta? I have something to show you, too. It's uh, uh, something with a Beretta gun. So don't let me forget that. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Vanessa Kitty's going to do any math for us if we need it done. So if you guys are having a hard time adding 2 plus 2 or you need to know the square root of something, don't ask me. Hit her up because she's a mathematician. I'm, I'm not. I know math like G2C and G3, but that's about where I stop. Explicit's here. What's happening, Explicit? Thanks for that nice comment. Just as I was getting ready to go on, I saw your comment pop up on my last video. And anyone who's left me comments today, I've been busy, but I'll answer you guys later. Have you guys noticed that? Does it even matter? I don't know. But I try to answer everybody's comments. Not really out of duty, though. It's because I actually really like you guys' comments. So I read them, and then if I'm busy, then I'll just respond later. But I do love when you guys leave me comments in my videos. We've got um, Jorge Vargas. How's it going, buddy? What's happening? Uh, guns and cars. What's happening? Guns and cars. Garage guy 879. What's happening, man? You know, I saw him sub to my channel not too long ago. He has a channel too. Are you guys familiar with him? Garage guy 879. Looks like he's got a pretty good channel going on. I'm going to check some more of your videos out later, man. I just saw you. You know when the studio shows you like the recent subs and then it ranks them like who has the most subscribers up to you? And that's why you popped up there. It was just like right in front of me. And I was like, oh, okay, who's this guy? So, yeah, shout out to Garage guy 879 Looks like you got a nice channel going, buddy. Tree guy, you're back. Did you hear me say to remind you before I leave for my break to grab those couple chainsaws? I really wanted to show you the chainsaws last week. I don't know if you heard me say that, but I kind of forgot. So I wasn't dissing on you, man. So David's going to buy a G3 and put a light on it and keep a G2 for carry. Now, the G3, remember, you can probably put any light there is. I should never say anything because... There's always something that'll mess you up. But for the most part, any light there is, G3, no problem. It's just we need to use this small little compact light for our G2C and the G2S. And I've got both now, guys. Did you guys see my unboxing video? I'm going to do a side-by-side -side with these guns later, the G2C and the G2S. And here's the deal. If you would have asked me, like, a while back. Like, why would you get a G2S? I would have initially said, no, don't get a G2S. It's stupid, right? Like 12 rounds, eight rounds. Why? It's the same gun. It's actually not, guys. Some of the parts are interchangeable. That's true. But what I'm already realizing, just messing around with this gun a little bit since my initial unboxing is just a little bit that it's shorter in the grip from top and bottom. Okay. And then actually from what I've noticed, notably or significantly thinner in the grip 
it actually makes the gun quite a bit more compact. So it's going to be easier to carry. Now, am I saying you want this over the G2C? I'm not saying that either. But they're really not the same gun, guys. They're really, really not. And I'm holding them right now. They're probably both equally as comfortable, but I can feel in the hand here, this gun's just smaller from top to bottom as well as from left to right. So I thought it'd be fair to do a little side-by-side -side video and people can always decide. I'm not going to tell you which one you want more, but I kind of think it's kind of, this gun's been getting a bad rap on YouTube. I see so many people in the comments of other videos saying, why would you want a G2S? It's exactly the same as a G2C. Now, for people that say they're exactly the same, that's just people that are miserable or they never even check the facts on it because it's rather factual this gun's smaller. You know what I'm saying? Now, look, if you guys say there's not enough difference to justify losing the four rounds, totally get it. But these are indeed different guns. And I've already had a couple women hold this in their hands. And the fact that it's so much slimmer, they instantly said that it felt more comfortable for them too. So just keep that in mind. Now, my hands aren't huge, but they're certainly bigger than the average women's hands. And, you know, I find I find the G2C to be just as comfortable, but I know this gun's going to conceal better. Okay? It's hard to tell in the light, but when you measure it, this gun is like, uh, they won't both focus at once. There we go. It's hard for me to get the perspective here, guys. It's about a half inch lower. It adds up. It really does. So, yeah. I got all the measurements. I took them earlier with a caliper. Um, let's see who else is in here. I thought I saw someone else pop in. David Medina Jr. Yep. You're the one that had just tuned in. We were talking about the laser and light. Now we're transitioning over to some Tauruses. Uh, Ribo009. What's happening? Thumbs up to you too, man. I'm just scanning real quick here. I'd like to say hi to everybody. Again. Tori McCurley. What's happening, Tori? I saw you earlier. I read one of your comments but forgot to say hi to you. So nice to see you here too. She purchased her first gun last week and she purchased a G2C. That's freaking awesome. Isn't that so cool, guys, when you hear someone that bought their first gun? Like it's a whole new world, Tori. Trust me. It really, really is. If it's your first gun, hopefully some of my videos have helped you, you know? And I think I just said that in one of my very recent videos. I'll help you guys as much as I can in my videos. But nobody's videos, whether it's my videos, whether it's Josh Benwares. How's it going, Josh? I just saw you pop in. Look, we're going to help you. But we can't substitute for you actually learning on your own. You have to take it your own responsibility and find a loved one. Find a trusted person that you know, your friend, your, your dad, your boyfriend, your husband, whoever it is in your case, your wife. If it's, a, you know, I'm not just talking to you, Tori. I'm just saying anybody that's new, right? Have somebody actually teach you hands on. And then, you know, watch YouTube videos too. You know, we can teach you a lot, but nobody's ever really going to be able to teach you unless they're with you, right? Now, training classes are great too. They really, really are. And I encourage that anybody and everybody, this is for all you guys, whether you're new or not, it's a good idea to go to a training class. It really, really is. A true professional, right? But I also believe that, like I said, loved ones and friends and family, that's still training too. You can learn a lot from somebody that is good with guns, knows gun safety, is good at shooting, knows the fundamentals. So I'm, I'm one of those that likes to look at it this way. Everyone needs to be safe. The better you are with any tool, the better you are at using it. But I'm not going to tell you, you have to go to this person's class or you're irresponsible. See, that's the great thing about the Second Amendment, right? There's nothing in the Second Amendment that says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed unless you trained under Jeff Cooper. Well, he's dead now, so that would screw everybody, right? You guys get the point I'm making. And I mentioned him because he's probably one of the all-time best gun guys that ever lived, but he's dead. If I mention any of the living guys, then I'll start arguments. But you guys know what I'm saying. If you want to go to one of those kind of classes, awesome. If it's you and your dad out back and he's teaching you, I think that's awesome too. Do you guys agree with me? Or do you think you have to go to operator level training no matter what? 
I'm not saying you should be required to, but you think you should. That's up to you guys. I'm just going to say, hey, look, the Second Amendment's for everybody. I think a lot of people feel more comfortable starting off getting taught by a loved one or a friend or a family member, right? And then guys that are like getting really good and on the top of their game, then yeah, you got to step it up and go to some, you know, different schools and all that kind of stuff. There you go. Just like Tori said, her boyfriend and her mother and her stepdad. There you go. Exactly. They all own the G2C. So it's the kind of the go-to gun for you after shooting it a couple times. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Um, who here? Tactical Review. What's happening, Tactical Review? How you doing, buddy? Mr. Tactical Review with over 100 subs now. Congratulations, man. That's the first big milestone, isn't it? Sweet. He's been working hard, guys. Tactical Review. He's been working hard. He's been putting out a lot of stuff lately. You know, his new um, AR, shortly before that AK. I kind of liked his 22 CMMG conversion kit. So, yeah, keep working hard, man. Congratulations on getting over 100 last night, Tactical Review. I'm proud of you, man. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see here. Explicit loves firearms. That's cool, man. That's why you can hang out in here. Anyone hate guns in here? If you do, yeah, you can stay too. You can stay. I'm not like the other side. The anti-gunners, they want to kick us out. All of you can hang out in here. But especially people like Explicit that love guns. So. The man you wish you were. What's happening, man? You know, he is the man you wish you were. You know, you and you and you and you and you. The man you wish you were. What else can I say? Isn't that a cool freaking name? <laughs> I always love his name. Dog Dad. What's happening, Dog Dad? How you doing, man? Man, just as I was to say the man you wish you were was my favorite, then Dog Dad comes in here. Okay, all you guys are my favorites pretty much. Except for poor conservative because I think I just saw where he stepped out for a minute. Um, Talk to Review wants to go to the warrior, warrior Poet class. That sounds like a good one too, man. I've... I thought about that myself, actually. Paul Gonzi, what's happening, Paul? Man, the screen's scrolling so fast. Shane Hartsell, how's it going, Shane? Nice to see you. I definitely don't want to miss anybody in here. I definitely don't want to miss anybody in here. If I missed you guys, please say hi to me. It might be the boring part, but if you guys haven't noticed, really, I'll let you guys in on a secret, okay? I really only show all the cool guns and stuff so I can hang out with you guys. So actually me saying hi to everybody is probably the most important part of the stream. So uh, Taco Night, what's happening, Taco? Man, you're making me hungry now. I want some. I wonder if Taco Bell will be closed when I'm done. I'm in Michigan. Josh Benware, okay, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of free state. It's our duty to be a fighting force that is capable of taking on a military force. Train or not, but you better be good. There you go. There you go. And training can start, though, with the boyfriend and mom and dad in the backyard. I think we'll all agree with that, right? I know Josh agrees with that for a fact. Um, Okay, okay, uh, Max in here, Mac the Great. How's it going? He says, thoughts on the SIG P226-18 mag for the G2C. Okay, so I happen to have one right here, a SIG P226 mag, and I happen to have a Taurus G2C right here. Is that what this stream's famous for, guys? Someone's like, have you got one of those? And I'm like, hold on. Anyways, somebody told me that the other day. SIG mag in the G2C. All right, here's the deal. I've done quite a few videos, so go back and look on these guns. I've had these guns feed rather flawlessly with brass ammo. Now, when I went to the steel, and this is on video, I had a decent amount of jamming in both the 18 as well as the 20 round. Right now, I've got the sleeve for the 20 to go onto my G3, but it's you know the same principle. I just have to swap sleeves out. Okay, there's two reasons for this. Steel-cased ammo has shot flawlessly 
every single time, like literally every time with the 12 round OEM mags. But there's something that occurs in guns called stacking tolerances, where you can have like a little bit of friction caused by the steel, a little bit weaker pressure spring in the mag, and also the mag not quite fitting absolutely perfect. And when you combine all three, you can have problems. And that's what I finally concluded. So, yes, when you get the 20-round, let me go back to this. I've had so many questions on this. Hopefully, somebody's interested in this. But I've gotten tons of questions. So, we have a SIG 22618 and a 20. The 20 and the 18 are the same exact mag body. The only difference is the 20 has a plus two floor plate. So, you get the extra two rounds just by having a bigger floor plate, right? but the body's the same, so just remember that. Now, the spring that comes with these is also exactly the same. The only difference is on the 20, you have the weight and pressure of two more rounds to push up. You also have, you also have a little bit longer distance for it to travel, therefore you're not compressing it quite as much, right? So by default, you could notice it right off the bat, the follower was so much easier to push down on the 20 than the 18. Not anymore. I changed this out with the Wolf Springs, W-O-L-F-F Wolf, if you guys aren't familiar with them. And I bought the Plus Pressure Spring for the SIG P226 mag. There's a video on my channel where I did this, right? Okay. Still ended up with a little bit of jamming. It did better with the steel. So here's what I've noticed. And some people are going to disagree with me on this, but... This is, my, this is basically the answer I've come to after a lot of testing and quite a few videos to kind of document and prove what I've done. The SIG mags work in the Taurus, yes, but they're not exactly. And I'm going to show you right now what I mean. 12-round mag, okay? Teeny, teeny bit, but barely any up and down movement, okay? These are the ones that are sold with the G2C. Now, I'm going to put in this. I'll put in the one with the grip sleeve, the 18. It doesn't matter. They all fit the same, right? Now, look at this. See that gap in there? There's a substantially bigger gap. The mag kind of sags a little bit, and this is why. I've done measurements with calipers, etc. They're really, really close. They're so close, these will work, and they'll usually feed. I found brass ammo. They feed great, but not necessarily steel. So you can use these on the range. Here's why I won't trust my life with an 18 round or 20 round SIG mag in a Taurus. These mag notches here, they're not exactly the same size. So it's gonna be really hard to show, but the distance here, this opening is wider by about 20% on the SIG mag, okay? Than it is on the Taurus mag. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's actually much narrower on the Taurus mag I mean, not much narrower, but 20% narrower. So see that versus this. So by this mag catch being a little bit wider, it gives it a little slot, this slot here, and it allows the mag to move up and down in the gun just a little bit, and it lets it sag, right? So, yes, the SIG mags work. I would not personally trust them with my life. I would use them for range practice and plinking. Just saying. But I already know there's people that argue with me on that, but I've kind of gone through the process, guys. But here's the good news. You want extended mags that are awesome, that work perfect? Here you go. With the new G3 being out, G3 mags are 100% compatible with the G2C. The slots that are cut in these G3 mags are literally identical to the G2C, 100% identical. You guys can probably see that angle there. Whereas the SIG mag was... A fatter opening, these are identical. So these all of a sudden, I'm going to test them more to let you guys know. But on my initial testing, yes, sir. They go right into the G2C, okay? All right? And they literally just fit. Teeny, teeny, teeny like any mag, but they're tight. So there's the 15-rounder. Here's the 17-rounder. So... The SIG mags are close enough, close enough for practice. In conclusion, the G3 mags absolutely 100% are literally made for your Taurus G2C. So I just did a video about a week and a half ago, Bloody Wheels. He's a good buddy of mine. You guys probably see him around IG and YouTube. 
great, great guy. He sells the grip spacers, okay? So, and this is the, this is the next thing. This is the perfect segue. You guys saw in that video where I had the, for the um, 15 round G3 mag into the G2C and then for the 17. Now, these are only available in black, guys, okay? So here's where I get to show off a little bit. Now, he might offer these later, but as of when I got these, you can't get these anywhere. You got to know somebody to get these. So just for me, literally, I don't know if you're watching Bloody Wheels, but if you are, thank you so much. He literally knows how much I love the color blue. And he's like, well, I don't sell the G3 in blue. And I'm like, oh, never mind. I'll, I'll take a couple more of the black ones. Well, I got a package from him in the mail today, and he literally made these just for me. So I'll show you guys how this works. We got the 17-round G3 mag. It comes with a little spacer for the G3. Not nearly as good as Bloody Wheel spacers, but this is only going to – I'll show you guys how that works, right? So the 15-round mag in the G3, that's completely flush. So – Metgar makes these mags. So I don't know if it's Metgar or Taurus. Puts the sleeve on here. So now your 17-round mag fits flush, right? All right. Now we're going to go to the G2C after I'm knocking SIG mags down. We got the gap, right? So we're going to take off this spacer. And I'm going to put on my bloody wheels. Blue spacer, right? Without dropping anything, guys. Really, really tight friction fit, by the way. All of his stuff is like this. It's like really, really good. And there you go. I can guarantee you guys, as of right now, this is the only place you're going to see a blue G3 mag spacer to your G2C. So Now, if you guys want the blue ones, I bet you if enough of you message Bloody Wheels and say, we want the blue G3 to G2C spacers, he'll probably start making them. And if you guys are new to all this spacer thing, go to Bloody Wheels on eBay. Go to my video a week ago. You'll see it. It's called like Bloody Wheels Grip Spacers. All of his info is right down in there where you can get a hold of his YouTube channel, his eBay store, etc. Tell him I sent you if you guys want. All right, now here's the 15 rounder. I showed all this in my previous video, guys, but it's with the black spacer. And, hey, I really like this blue color. So now we've got the 15-round G3 and the G2C. So, heck yeah. Isn't that pretty cool, guys? So that's my answer. The G3 mags are 100% direct swap out with the G2C. That's what I recommend. If you want the extra couple rounds with the Metgar, or these are a little cheaper, fine for plinking. I'm not going to trust my life with these, and you guys can watch my videos. Flawless with the brass, but not with the steel, and it's like this. I don't carry steel for self-defense ammo, but if any mags show me a little bit of hesitation and doubt, and it's picky on this and that, not using it for defense. So there you guys go. And let me see here. You guys have probably been asking me questions, but I was kind of, hey, you guys look good. You guys are some good looking people. Don't get me wrong, but look how good this blue looks. Look how pretty this is, okay? My eyes have been kind of on the blue, just to be quite frank with you guys. This is pretty, isn't it? Yes, the man you wish you were, you're handsome. You're just not as pretty as the blue, okay? He's like, I don't want to be called pretty. Screw you, dude. He knows I'm messing with him. Did I answer your question, Mac? I was probably way too thorough. But I've had this question so much, I was hoping like at least three or four other people were interested. If not, I just totally bored the crap out of you guys like crazy, okay? Yes, and that's true. A couple of you guys are talking. It's a duty, and I've said that in a lot of my gun rights videos. It's not just that we have the right to keep and bear arms, okay? It's actually our duty, like our obligation. Like if the true founding fathers were still alive right now, all these people running around, they'd probably look at us and say, you're fired. You can just get that out. To be honest, see, there's a difference between there's privileges and there's rights and there's duties, right? Somehow they're trying as hard as they can, and they've partially succeeded. That's why we need to step it up, and we always need to step it up. 
and we can never stop because they're never going to stop. Our rights have kind of been relegated to duties for in a, in a lot of states and even in the whole United States. Look, I'm not trying to boost their ego. I'm just being honest with you guys. Well, what people keep forgetting about is there's actually a duty that goes along with this. And as soon as you're lax on your duty, right, to keep your God-given rights at the forefront and alive, that's when they start getting relegated to privileges. So we're talking about three different things here, but it all ties in. If you forget about your duty to preserve your rights, your rights start to get relegated down to a privilege. And a privilege is basically like, Mom, can I watch some extra TV? Only if you're done with your homework. All right, homework's done. Can I please watch TV? We'll pick up your room first. All right, you can watch 15 minutes of TV, right? That's a privilege. That's what moms do to their kids. And kids should ask their mom and dad for permission because they're not old enough to 100% know what's best for them. But make no mistake, the government has already gotten us to the point with so much of the Second Amendment where we're begging and pleading and asking for permission. I mean, how many of you guys are into collecting stamps? Collecting stamps is a great hobby if you're collecting literally postage stamps. That's fine. But you guys know what I'm talking about. The other kind of stamps where you have to give up your fingerprints, your photo, $200 of your money, depending, three months, six months, a year, two years of your time. Fill out your paperwork, which is more of your time, to buy a stupid stamp. And yes, guys, it looks literally like the postage stamp, like the old school kind that you lick with the perforated edges. Tell me that's not the same thing as saying, Mom, can I play video games or watch TV? Only when you're done with your homework. So, Mr. Government, can I please put this silencer on my gun so I don't damage my hearing or bother the neighbor who's taking a nap? I'm trying to be courteous to my family, and I want to shoot with a silencer, right? Only if you ask us permission and bribe us. So you have to bribe them and beg them, and then they decide if you get it or not. And here's the crazy part. Once you send them that $200, okay, you don't get it back if they say no. That's just your application fee. If they say, nope, sorry, sorry, you got in a fight with your girlfriend when you were 18. He said, she said, that's domestic violence in this state. Nope. So that's what happens, guys. Rights turn into privileges when we forget about our duty to protect our God-given rights. God gave them to us, but he said it was up to us to keep them. It even says that in the Bible. And I mentioned the Bible because much of our Bill of Rights, our Constitution, and our Declaration of Independence, it's quite obvious they were referencing, you know, Christian principles and God. So God basically said, you know, you're going to have to fight, and you're going to have to stand up for this. And that's how our founding fathers started our country. It's like the old story. You guys have probably all heard it, but when Ben Franklin and them were leaving, they were, he's coming down the steps of the Capitol right after our country was formed. A lady said, what, sir, do we have, a monarch or a republic? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. He didn't say that, Ben Franklin didn't say, I'm going to live forever, and me and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, don't worry, we'll be here. We're badasses. We, we, we you know, got the red coats and got them out of here. Well, we'll keep them around. Well, we'll keep them up. No, they didn't say that. He told that lady, if you can keep it. Now, we might be her 12th great-grandchildren now. So now at this point, it's if you and I can keep it. If Mateo can keep it. If Josh Benware can keep it. If Beretta Man can keep it. If Tactica Review can keep it. If Tori can keep it. If Vanessa Kitty can keep it. All of you guys. Matt Morrison can keep it. If you can keep it. And they said keep for a reason. It wasn't that it was going to be easy. It was never going to be easy. I mean, Thomas Jefferson said, from time to time, the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants. They predicted there might have to be another war. Are we calling for one like that tonight? No. But nobody said it was going to be easy, did they? They actually told us it wasn't going to be easy. And duty is much different than, oh, it's convenient. Oh, I think maybe I should. Oh, it'd be fun to do that. No, it's not always fun. It's not always convenient. It's not always easy. Here's what I would recommend all of you guys do. If you guys are looking for my recommendation, not that you came here to get lectured. We're just all, I think most of you guys agree with me at least a little bit. Heck, a lot of other people. We have veterans in here. I know a few of them right off the bat. I don't know if they want to be named or not because I do respect people's privacy. But here's the deal. 
People have gone out and risked life for them, okay? A lot of people have. I have not, but a lot of people have. So here's what I think we should all be doing. Yeah, we should be shooting and training with our guns, of course. That's very – but maybe instead of sitting here, you know, doing this all night, one of these nights, or going out to the range for an extra hour, why don't you guys go back to my last video? I just put it out today, this afternoon, okay? And – you guys might be tired of listening to me. You might like what I say. It doesn't matter. It's not about me or any of you guys. Look at this letter that one of the fellow viewers wrote yesterday. Awesome freaking letter. I don't know how much time it took him to write it, but I imagine he sat down for at least a couple hours to think of all the right wording. Sit down and make a nice letter. Send it to all your politicians, elected officials, but also tell everybody you know in real life. I mean, we have elections that are literally getting won and lost right now on a 1,000 votes or less for statewide. The governor of Kentucky lost by, some say, 5,000 votes. Some people say 2,000 votes. The governor switched from Republican to Democrat by 2,000 votes in a state like Kentucky. Louisiana governor, their election's tomorrow. Okay? They're all saying, all the experts are saying, the Louisiana governorship could be decided by 1,000 votes. There's freaking 40 people in here. If all 40 people talk to like five people, that's actually enough to possibly sway one of your local elections. Heck, on the local level, do you guys ever look at the polls? You guys could have an anti-gun state representative. And sometimes they only win by like three, 400 votes on the state level. That's because a lot of people don't care. But here's what I have noticed. Bloomberg's in the race now. Bloomberg. Yeah. The founder and controller of Moms Demand Action, Every Town for Gun Safety, Business Owners Against Guns, all of these. The guy that said you can't have a certain size pop to drink, you know? I'm from Michigan. We call it pop. You guys can call it soda if you want. But tells you what size pop you can drink. Yeah, he's in the race. And you know what I've noticed? It's energizing all these groups again. He's their hero, okay? He's their hero. Some of us have heroes in the gun community, but trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. The way they look at him is like Thomas Jefferson came back from the grave, right? He's in. It's my, whether he wins or not, he's not going to win, I don't think. He better not win. You guys all need to make sure he doesn't win. All of us do. But Bloomberg is really, really, really rallying the troops right now. You've got a bunch of moms demand action people. They're going to go vote. So we need mothers like Tori McCurley to be out there canceling out their vote. It's what you have to do. It's your duty. You know what I mean? Because here's the thing. This G2C, as innocent as it gets, this is a quick history lesson for some of you young people. I'm not, I'm not that young anymore, guys. I owned my first couple guns before 94. The assault weapons ban came through. Did you know that when the assault weapons ban came through in 94 and it lasted all the way till 04? And I'll get to that in a second. This little innocent G2C, right? Little gentleman's gun. This gun would have been freaking banned from purchase new. They would have had to sell you this gun, and they would have had to put an extended plug in the bottom of it. 12 freaking rounds was too much to have from 1994 to 2004 for the whole country because nobody cared about their duty to fight it off. They, they all just thought that, oh, someone else will do it. And guess what? Our right got relegated to a privilege. If it pleases the crown, may I please have a gun? And they said, yes, you lowly peasants. You can have your G2C, but it's only going to have 10. And then they used to put out the freaking magazines. Let me see if I have one right here. I think I have one right over here, guys. There's probably not one too far away. Maybe I don't have one here, but do you guys remember the older Glocks you'd buy, the, the police trade-ins? Let me see what's in this one. Right here, right here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, we live in a country, the United States of America. We're not supposed to have separations of classes. In India, they have the caste system, okay? In a bunch of other countries, they have the, the caste system, where you're cast into a certain classification of people. If you're born a pipe fitter, that's all you're ever allowed to be, unless you can bribe the dad enough to marry up. You guys know the point. Police are civilians in the United States. They just are. Now, people who are either enlisted personnel or officers of the armed services, and they're actively in at that point in time, 
they are not civilians. But our president is a civilian. Don't ever forget that. Our police officers, our civilians, don't ever forget that. These are not minor details. Do you know how sick and tired I'm hearing? Even a lot of gun people running around saying, well, there's the police and then there's the civilians. Yeah, the police don't really consider themselves civilians anymore because you and I and everyone else hasn't been reminding them enough. Police are civilians in this country, period. And the president of the United States is a civilian, period. And there's a reason for that. Go to any country in this whole world where General so-and-so is running the country or Chairman so-and-so is running the country. And the country usually has the People's Republic of in it. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Anytime General so-and-so is running the country and anytime it's the military cruising up and down the street in tanks and there's non-civilians, okay, that are giving people civil infractions and blah, 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 those places are hell on earth normally. These are the places everyone in the world moves out of to move to the United States. I'm going somewhere with this, guys. I'm going to circle back around. So just start reminding people when people say, well, there's the police officers and then there's civilians. Your county sheriff, he's a civilian. Your state trooper, he's a civilian. Okay? A PFC, private first class that's currently enlisted right now, they're not a civilian. They're in the military. But here's the difference. The United States Constitution specifically prohibits our military from policing the civilians. So we need to remember that. Civilians are supposed to police civilians. The President of the United States is a civilian. So why the heck do we allow this to happen? See this magazine? Okay? Restricted law enforcement only. I went on that whole rant just a second ago. They're civilians just like me and you. Why was it from 2004? 1994 to 2004, I could have a 10-round mag. And in this case, with this being a 40 cal, they could have a 15-round mag. We're all civilians. So basically what it's doing is taking a class of people, the police, and saying they're civilians. And by the way, guys, I totally respect the police. If anyone thinks this is me bashing cops, it's nothing to do with that whatsoever. Because just remember, when cops retire, when they're at home after work, they're not always armed as much as they are at work. You guys know what I'm saying? So this is even for the cops to help them, believe it or not. Why do we have civilians patrolling and it's restricted where only they can have it, but the rest of us couldn't? So instead of just saying, oh, well, we have civilians and then we have police, they should have just said it how they meant it. They should have said, well, we have, we have the higher level civilians with badges and then we have the peasants and the peasants can have less rounds. Now, here's the big difference, guys, and I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom, but it's true. Go watch that video I put out earlier today. I don't want the views. That's not why I'm telling you guys to watch it. I want you guys to listen to what another viewer wrote in to me, and he gave me a sample of what he wrote. It proves to me there's some smart people out there. So you guys need to get off your butts. We need to do something because the next time they do an assault weapons ban, okay, this is a relic. You, you guys know I could buy this after the ban was over, right? That's why I have it here. Next time they do it, I guarantee you there will be no sunset clause. Guarantee it. See, they learned from that. They got the assault weapons ban put in. They lost the Congress. It went from Democrat right back over to Republican as fast as it freaking could. And then they're like, oh, shoot, we lost power. The Republicans are back in. And then it expired while Republicans were in office, okay? George Bush was the president. It didn't get signed back in. Not that Bush is super pro-gun, guys, I'm just saying. Not as bad as Clinton and Obama, etc. But yeah, next time we have an assault weapons ban, there will be no grandfather clause. When they put law enforcement only on your 12-round Taurus mag, you will never, ever, ever legally be able to buy one again. I, I don't want that to be the case. I really don't. But I'll bet you money it's true. It's true. And I just saw out of the corner of my eye. Sorry, guys, I haven't really been reading the comments much. I was kind of on a little bit of a rant. That's how I get sometimes, you know. Um, explicit, man. God bless you. He lives in Massachusetts. He's still stuck with these 94 mags. So let me get this straight, explicit. I think I know the answer, but just for the other people. If you have this mag that says law enforcement restricted, would this be a felony for you to have this right now, this exact mag? Just to clarify, I think that's what he's telling us, guys.
Retire military on recall anytime for the rest of your lives. Okay, I didn't actually know that. I'm, I'm sure to a certain age, right? But you do agree with me, right, Vanessa? When you get out and your service is done, you do become a civilian legally, right? And then if you were recalled back in, I assume then you would become either enlisted or commissioned at that point. I'm not a military person, but as far as I know, that's how that works. Um, we've got Trey Orr here. What's happening, Trey? Uh, Joe T. What's happening, Joe? Um, I'm just taking a quick scan here, guys. It was forever. Okay, like Mateo said, he said, don't forget the National Guard is not a militia. They fall under the UCMJ and are a uniformed army. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. I just went on my rant about the cops because cops could have these for 10 years and we couldn't. And cops are not supposed to be a separate class from us. See, that's the whole point of this. Oh, Max rubbing it in. He's like, man, I'm young. <laughs> I'm only 22. It's like, thanks, buddy. Just keep rubbing it in. <laughs> All the rest of the guys are like, shoot, do I even remember? 22. <laughs> oh, man. Poor conservative's in his early 20s. Poor conservative and Matt can hang out. All right, did I miss any comments I needed to, guys? Cave Dave's here. What's happening, Cave? How you doing, man? Um, ch -ch -ch. I didn't really mean to go on, on a rant that long, guys. I don't know if that's what you guys came here for or not, but I'm sorry. When it happens, it happens. It's just, man, did anyone else read that letter yesterday that I read out loud? I was so freaking honored to read that just because sometimes you feel alone, don't you? Do you guys ever feel like you're the only one and everywhere you're at, everyone around you? I mean, there's a lot of them out there that are against us all over the place. It's just nice to know there's some other people out there that have our backs from all the different states because we need each other right now. And I believe as of right now, some people are going to disagree with me, but I believe right now we have our backs by writing these letters, making these calls. They wanted to have like 20 measures of gun control after those two back-to-back -back psychopaths did their things a couple months ago. Even Trump was all over it. A lot is back down because from what I understand, we blew up their phones. We blew up their inboxes. And they don't really care what we say, but they do care about one thing. They want their power. They want to keep it. And if you take their power away, they lose all their immunities, right? They lose their immunities of a senator, immunities of a representative on the floor of Congress. No, no, no. They become regular old civvies like us, don't they? So <coughs> trust me, they don't want out. They really, really don't want to get out of there. Once you put them high on that hill and that ivory tower, they just like to look right down on us, don't they? And it's kind of crazy too, isn't it? Capitol Hill. Do you guys ever think about those little subtleties? I think it's all for a reason. It's on this super high hill. So when they're up there making the rules, they're literally physically above us and they can just look right down, right down on the people. <laughs> it kind of makes you sick, doesn't it? Jeremy Wilson's in his 20s. No, we, we have to stay united, and that's good to hear you guys right now talking about, um, you know, the different mags, or not the different mags, the different letters you guys are writing. I'm sorry, I was reading two things at once. Explicit saying he can have pre-ban pre mags, but it's hard to, you know, if a rookie cop would know that, I get you, I get you, and we don't want to say too much online, but this one's not a pre-ban, keep in mind. When they say restricted on them, this is during the ban. The ones before the ban didn't have it, and the ones after the ban do have it, right? Did I see the Puerto Rican hillbillies in here? I saw Mateo saying hi to him. Where's he at? Ramon Nieves. How you doing, buddy? He was one of the winners of the um of the Bloody Wheels. He won a, a mag loader. I was talking about that earlier. Veterans have to serve so much on active duty before they're considered a veteran. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Poor conservative. He's like, yeah, I was in my early 20s, like, yeah, 30 years ago, something like that. <laughs> oh, man. That's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, you guys are kind of cracking me up with a few things you're saying here. Okay, you guys were listening. That's cool. You guys are mainly talking amongst yourselves, which is awesome. So I can keep ranting and don't have to, to worry about snubbing anybody, right? 
Raphael didn't even know about the restricted mag. So there you go. It was worth doing for at least one person. So, yeah. Vanessa Kitty, she's like, I could be poor conservative's daughter. He's that old. But, yeah, isn't that just kind of – one more time, guys. Does that make your lip curl up? Does anyone see that and kind of go, because it freaking should. And if it doesn't, you better get yourself straight. Because I don't want a bunch of milk toast dudes running around with me. Uh, uh, uh. No, you better curl your lip up when you see this, guys, because the other side, they want these. They want every last one of them. They're telling us they want them now. It's not a secret whatsoever. Turn them all in. Feinstein said if I could have got the votes. I would have taken every one of them. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. Beto, he didn't even say if he got the votes. He just said, I'll come by and send armed cops to your doors to confiscate your AK-47, your AR-15. Yeah. So he didn't even care about the votes, which they don't. Let them get tyrannical enough and see what happens. Go to another country where General so-and-so is running the country and say, but sir, we didn't vote to allow you to take our guns. See how that works out for you just a little bit. Now, for you service men and women, you guys know the context I mean. When you're in, yeah, you respect your general. You might hate your general too. That's your No, I mean when, the, when general so-and-so is the equivalency of the president. It's not good. Not good at all. I've never seen one country in the history of the world where when General so-and-so or Chairman so-and-so or Premier so-and-so, see, they always have these certain titles, never been a good thing, not even one time. Um, they didn't teach you that in history, Raphael? Why would they want to do that? Do they, do they have you guys read 1984 still in high school for you younger people in the crowd? Because if you haven't read 1984, I don't care how old or young you guys are. I just know at one time they used to actually have people read, right? Those books. If you haven't read 1984, guys, anyone in here, whatever your age is, read 1984. Because the exact things they're talking about in 1984 has a lot to do with. They didn't teach us that in history class. <laughs> they don't want to teach us that in history class. Because if we learn too much, then they fear us. If we're dumb, we have no choice but to fear them. And that goes back to that other saying that I love to death. One of the best sayings ever, right? When there's liberty, the government fears the people. And when there's tyranny, the people fear the government. And it's really an awesome saying. Just think about what that actually means. The government's been afraid of the people for a long time. Now, does that mean we're good people? Yes, of course we're good people. Are we violent? No. But some of the best people ever, some of the most godly people with the best morals and principles that ever lived that founded this country. By the way, probably some of the bravest people that ever lived, right? Guess what? The British government started off not so much. By the time the Revolutionary War was, they were afraid enough to leave, get back on their ships and go across the ocean. And they saw the way they whipped the crap out of the largest military in the world. And they wouldn't have even considered trying to do things to the citizens at that time that our country is doing now. Because guess what? If Franklin and Jefferson and all of them would have done that within the first few years of our republic, this grand experiment on self-governance of the people by the people, where they call them public servants for a reason, right? They're there to protect and serve us. They're not They're not there to protect us individually. They're there to have, you know, an, an army, fine. They're there to serve us, though. They're there to give us what we need. If they would have tried that crap back in the 1790s, early 1800s, they would have been gone instantly. Minutes. Don't even think about it. If they would have said, yeah, we needed you to kind of sort of keep your reasonable muskets, but... It's not reasonable to have um, more than five rounds. So, yeah, we're going to need you to give all those musket balls to us and stuff. They would have been dead so fast they wouldn't have even known it. And they knew it. Now, I don't know what you guys think, but it seems like everybody's just, you're pretty much just so afraid of the government. It's like, well, we just hope to God that we just get to hope to God that they don't take this from me. Okay, how about this? We'll compromise. We'll compromise. Okay, you can have our AK, but just don't take our AR. Do you guys think we would do that? 
We've done it before. We absolutely would do that again. And when I say we, I mean collectively the so-called gun community. I'm going to give you guys an example. You guys remember an ammo called 7N6? That was the Russian designation for the military surplus ammunition used by Russia, Bulgaria, Poland, many other countries. Same as like what our M855 is, right? It was the green tip, if you will. Well, the government came in and said, no, nah, we'll let you guys have 545 ammo, but you can't quite have this 7 and 6 because we're kind of we're kind of a little bit afraid of that, the government said. So, yeah, you can't have that anymore. Guess what? They were afraid we would have it. Just think about the irony in all this. They were afraid we would have this ammo. So they banned the importation of it. And guess what? We were too afraid to go in there to Washington and say, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You need to listen to us and you need to be scared. We'll buy whatever ammo we want. Nope. They were so afraid of us having it. They took it from us and we were too afraid to stop them. But here's the sad part, guys. And this is why we need to stick together on everything. Because when they came back, when they took that seven and six, there might have been one, there might have been two, but statistically, zero, zero, quote unquote, AR guys said a freaking peep. They gloated. They got in all the streams. They got in the chats. Don't say I'm making this up, guys. I was in there. I watched it. I've been around this crap a long time. The AR guys all got in there and they said, ha, 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 ha. Now your AK sucks worse than ours. Bye bye, seven and six. You suck. See ya. Have a good one. Boom, bada, boom. That's what they did, guys. Tell me if I'm wrong. Hopefully, I have a witness in here. And it was gone because not many people cared. There weren't many AK guys, so they took it. And then you know what happened? M855. The government got so high on the hog, floated on its own power. Because here's the problem. Don't forget this. You feed the beast. You give it a morsel of food. It gets the nutrients from what you give it, and it gets bigger and stronger. So we gave them seven and six. We didn't create enough of a fuss. We didn't threaten them with their jobs. We didn't threaten them with anything. They took it just like you would take candy from a baby. Literally, just here, give me that sucker, little kid. They took it that easy. 99% of the people in the gun community laughed. They didn't even freaking care. Then a couple years later, they said, well, guess what? We're such big bad selves here, the ATF and Washington and the Department of XYZ, blah, blah, blah. Now we're going to go after the M855. Guess what happened then? Everybody spoke up, threw fits, and said, this will be the next civil war if you take our M855. And, hey. The AK guys joined in and helped the AR guys. Every single gun person said, you're not going to take our M855, and they didn't. So the one time we all stuck together, they did not take, and we can still buy M855 right now. The time it was the ammo not many people cared about, people literally told them, I don't care about it, and they took it. Look at bump stocks. Not many people care about bump stocks, so they quite frankly took it. And it's a proven fact that not many people cared. When you look at that, they said we had 32,000 letters supporting the bump stock and we had 200,000 against it. My numbers might be a little off, but it's something like that. Here's the funny part, because I've been a big bump stock advocate from the beginning, okay? And I've always said I love the bump stock. I think it's the greatest thing that ever existed. And that's how you have to do it. You can't tell them, oh, it's useless and nobody wants it, but you shouldn't take it. You've already defeated your own argument. How can you argue that you have to keep something when you just told the person you don't need it? So from day one, it's on the record, guys. Go back and look. All I said was is the bump stock, it's the greatest accessory ever, and everybody has the right to own it, and it's part of the Second Amendment, blah, 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 right? Not many people cared. They took it. But what they didn't realize was this. It bans like 35 other things. They're just not choosing to enforce it right now. So don't think I'm talking down. I'm not talking down to none of you guys. If any of you guys thought I even said that, it's not you guys. I'm trying to inspire you guys that next time you hear, okay? So, so please, if for one minute someone thought, hey, you guys didn't do a good enough job, blah, 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 blah. That's not what I meant. I'm just giving you guys some things to think about for next time you're over to Uncle Joe's, Uncle Joe shotgun. And he's like, well, as long as we just give him a little bit of this, that say, no, dude, this guy I was watching on YouTube and you can look it up because everything I'm telling you guys is true. I'm literally everything I'm telling you is verified. Most of it in videos on my channel, but go look at it anywhere. You can say, no, they banned a certain type of ammunition. 
And then they went after the other type. That's what they do. Every time you give them an inch, they take a mile. No, 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 no. You give them an inch, they take like 10 miles, right? And you give them like one pound of food and they gain like 10 pounds of muscle mass. That's how this works. And I can't remember who said it, but somebody said, we need to stop calling them leaders. They're not leaders. This country's led by you and you and you and me and all of us. They're actually public servants. You know, a servant serves you, right? Like rich people have it where the servant shines their shoes and brings their food in, whatever. That's what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be shining our shoes. I'm just saying, that's what a servant's supposed to be to me, in my opinion. If you don't do a good job, you're fired. Get the heck out of here. Like right now, gone. Career politician. You know how they always say, oh, don't worry. The ones that are the ones that are going to go over all the stuff for the, the Trump impeachment, these are career prosecutors. And they actually say this. Even Fox News does. Like, we can trust the ones that are career. Yeah, people that once you get hired in, they literally can't get fired no matter what they do. You can look in the ATF, the IRS, and find cases where, yeah, this guy sexually assaulted 13 of his coworkers. So all they did is gave him a raise where he wouldn't have to work around so many women. When they say this is a career government person, that's literally what it means. They literally can rate people. And all they do is we'll just give him a raise and shift him where there's no women around for him to rape because he's a career prosecutor. He's a career IRS official. I don't know. That's how I see it. I think all this stuff's been documented and it's actually come out on a lot of congressional hearings, hasn't it? You guys saw the IRS scandal targeting conservatives. Oh, this guy did this. This guy did that. Well, what did you do to correct it? Oh, we just transferred him up a few ranks to supervisor where he didn't have contact with any pretty women. We only let him work with this one woman and she was so ugly. He didn't grab her butt. So it was good. Yeah, that's what we call a career, a career government man. Oh, <laughs> Dog Dad, he said, uh, 2AEDU, thank you for convincing me to vote. I've been watching gun channels for years. I've never been persuaded. Thank you. Look, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to persuade as much, but no, thanks, man. That's awesome. Thanks. I know you meant that as a compliment. And I wasn't talking down to none of you all in here. I'm just reminding you. Next time something comes along and you're like, well, I'm not a tourist guy, so I want to ban the tourists. I'm cool with that. Don't do that because then they'll come for your Glock. And what's interesting is these, these new modern anti-gunners, they hate all guns. So they're completely unified in what they want. So, <laughs> And that's why they're kind of sort of doing better than us lately. Now, now, look, we're still doing better. I'm not letting you guys down. What I meant that they're doing better at is they can actually get like more people at their rallies because they're just, they're just one focus. They literally say, we want it all. We want every last one. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. And a very, very focused, you know, very small little plan does get people to line up right in a straight line. So that's what I think we should do. You can't have any of our stuff at all. I don't care what it is, okay? I don't care. If red's not your fav co favorite color, don't buy a red gun. I don't care if you don't like commies. I don't like commies either. If the gun was made in a communist country, so what? It's just a gun. You know what's great about all these communist guns we have here, by the way? We're not supporting communism. And actually, we bankrupted these communist countries, and they had to sell us their surplus guns for 10 cents on the dollar. So it's actually a sign of the victory that we had over the former you know, Soviet puppet states when the Bulgarian Makarovs came into the country for 60 bucks a piece a few years ago, where there's Polish Tokarevs, $250 right now, by the way, guys, for sale. Nothing against modern Poland, nothing against any of these people, by the way. Almost all of us, half of us, whatever, know somebody or are descendants of somebody that was from a lot of these communist countries, okay? But the actual governments had to sell off all their stuff for 10 cents on a dollar to collectors over here because they bankrupted themselves by being jackboots. I just hope it's not us someday that are having to sell everything off for 10 cents on a dollar and eating out of garbage trucks like Venezuela because they were the wealthiest per capita nation like 20-something years ago. Now they're killing their dogs and eating them and eating out of garbage trucks. Why? Because they let jackboots rise too high in power. Never own a CZ then. No, I was saying it's good to own stuff that we got from commies because 
those Pacific countries, yeah, they kind of. Oh, let's see what you guys are saying here. Thomas Defense, what's happening, man? He says G3s are flying off the shelves. They all flew into the old shop here, guys. I've got all of them right here. Just off camera, okay? Just off camera where poor conservative can't see them. No, this is my only G3, guys, but I believe him they're flying off the shelves. I know that's not a joke. Brassard, when did you get in here, man? How's it going, Brassard? If I missed you like an hour ago, sorry, but I think you just came in here. You know, that's funny what Brassard said. Bumps extra useful on bipods. Mateo and I were talking about that. Oh, it's probably a couple months ago now, but oh, yeah. The RPK on a bipod? Yeah. Let's just say this. I've got an RPK right over there in the other room, AES-10B, that has no stock on it. Can you guys guess what used to be on it? Of course, I took it off, you know. When I'm in a public stream and stuff, I took it off. Trust me. It's off of there. Yeah, like Benware said earlier, you give them an inch, <laughs> they think they're a ruler. That's a good one. That is a pretty good one. He's right, though, even though that was kind of funny. <laughs> uh now, Mateo was agreeing. He's just reminding all the CZ fanboys. We do have some. Okay, we've got Glock tards in here. I know we do. I know we at least have one Glock tard in here for a fact. I haven't seen Uncle Dan tonight. If Uncle Dan was in here, he's literally been admitting lately in public, guys. He's a full Glock tard now. <coughs> His words, not mine. I know we've got a CZ guy in here. <coughs> Josh Benware. <laughs> Now, here's the thing with Mateo. Mateo's kind of a Glock tard, but only like, what, 80% Glock tard? Now, I love Glocks too. I, <laughs> For those of you that are new, I can make fun of all of you guys. Why? Because I have them all myself. So I have CZs that I totally love. I have Glocks right here, like literally. Uh, Max says, I'm a Taurus tard. There you go. I'm a Taurus tard. Look. Right here. So, yeah. We got Taurus Tards in the house. Yeah, Smith Revolvers for the win. Now, Uncle Dan was, Josh. I swear to God, he was running around hardcore the other day, literally calling himself a Glock Tard by name. But he was just riling people up that night. I knew what was going on. Um, Joe, they make great guns. I won't say their name on here, to be honest with you. What they did to the Second Amendment, uh-uh. Wow, the great guns they make weren't really made by them, but HS product makes great guns. Let's just say that. Now, look, I'm a big advocate of free speech. You guys want to say their name? Say it all day long. Somebody got into it with me big time a while back. What's wrong with you? You're blah, blah, blah. You're just as oppressive as, it's like, dude, did you listen to me? I don't care. If you guys want to promote a company all day, every day, I'm not going to stop you. But I have my own freedom of speech. I won't utter the company's name. Is that fair enough? And, and no, Joe, you didn't get me mad, Joe. I'm just bringing up a bigger picture. You know what I'm saying here? People literally, it's turned around now where people, have, I hate to say it, in the gun community have been turning on me. And I've gotten lectured pretty bad by some people. I'm not going to mention their name because they're traitors, in my opinion. They sold, they tried to sell the whole state up the river. Okay? Go to DC Channel Guns. He had the balls to do the video. Go to DC Channel Guns. You guys know him, right? I gave his channel a shout in the past. You have to look back a couple months ago. He puts up a lot of videos. Video showing every single FFL that lost their license from the from the proposed legislation that that company that you guys are talking about advocated for. They went in and they lobbied and they said, here, make this, where us and this other company that I won't talk about are basically the only gun companies in the whole state of Illinois. And there's a factual list that you can fact check and look up of all of the FFLs and small businesses that lost their FFL due to that. And it just freaking happened. And then they lied about it. Then they lied about it again. Then they change their narrative. Then they change it again. And somehow I've got supposed gun people that are saying, oh, you're the tyrant. I'm unsubbing from you right now. Get the heck out of here and let 100 patriots come in right behind you, you piece of crap. 
Because you're not a gun guy. Just because you own a gun does not mean you're with me. Maybe some people have me mistaken. Okay? There's gun guys and there's Second Amendment guys and there's Constitution guys. You want to sit there and say, oh, it's okay for a company to completely crap on gun rights. But now I'm going to condemn you and your channel for calling them out? Go ahead. Call me out. Leave my freaking channel. 100 more people will follow in behind you. Have a nice day, sweet pea. That's literally what I have to say to those people. And again, it's none of you. I'm preaching to the choir. It's not any of you guys. And if it is, oh, it is one. I did. I said see one left. So see ya. Get him out. No, here's the thing. I truly mean this. So let me double back down. You guys can talk about them as much as you want. I will. I will promise you guys this. If you mention this godforsaken company, in my opinion, you can talk about them for hours. I will never come in your channel and tell you to stop. I've never done it. I've never once gone into any of their channels and said, you need to stop talking about this company because of X, Y, Z. I just say, I'm not going to talk about them here. And I, I, I did it more thoroughly than I probably should have, but let's explain why I don't like them. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> There's arguments all over the place on YouTube though, isn't there? And some people say, look, dude, you should just call them out because then you're calling them out. Here's the problem. Any publicity is kind of good publicity. Even bad publicity is good publicity. Right, well, let's go back on memory lane here. A month ago. I'm going to lighten this up, guys. Oh, he came back. He came back. The guy that, no, I don't know. I'm just looking at my counter. <laughs> I just saw when I was saying all that, like, if you want to tell me that I can't condemn this company, you can leave. And I watch one of the numbers bump down, and then it just bumped back up. So, <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> what was I talking about here? Poor conservative. I got to go like this to look at his. Okay. For those of you looking at the screen, you know what I'm talking about. He's got all the sideways emojis and all that. But no, no, I, I won't I won't promote. But I will show you guys. I think I showed it before. I will show you my HS2000 whenever you want to see it. Love the HS2000. It's an awesome gun, okay? Totally love it. Oh, I know what it is. People have said in the past, you know, just say their name and, and, and call them out. No, any publicity is good publicity. I'd rather them just, here's the problem. The company in Croatia that makes their actual guns, HS product, they actually make really good guns. I'm hoping this will literally happen. The CEO slash owner, he's the son of the person that founded this company. I hope he literally just leaves, retires, whatever, and... If, if, the, if the people that made the decisions are completely gone, I guess I'll give them a second chance because if the people that are in there didn't do anything wrong, I'll cut people slack a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Max says, channel's awesome. Thanks for good content, too. A. Really having a blast chatting with this community. Let's do this more. Every Friday night, 9.30. I want to show you guys a bunch of sneak previews, but somebody just said they remember when this was the Glock Shooter 79 channel, and it was. Was that Cave Dave? One of you guys, Brastard. Some of these guys, they won't go away. They're just going to razz me till the end, but that's good. That's how I know who my um, two my old friends are, right? Anyways, you guys remember some of these old streams where I'd start the stream, and I'd be like, all right, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about gun rights for a minute, but first... We have to talk about this. And I go on like a two-hour rant. Brrr, and then I, all right, guys, we've been on two and a half hours. All right, here, I'm going to show you this gun real quick. And then I, does anyone remember those old streams? Quite a few of you guys have been around here a while now. It's, it's cool, though. I, I, I kind of, I just speak my mind. And if someone doesn't like it, that's cool. I don't really care. Dog Dad remembers the long, shaggy redhead. My hair is still red. What the heck, man? I'm trying to grow it out for the winter a little bit, but probably not that long. It's kind of still blonde, though, because in the summer, it gets more blonde from the sun hitting it and stuff. Fierce Mouse. Where the heck have you been, buddy? Just as I said, one of my old school guys, Fierce Mouse pops in. Now, Fierce Mouse, you guys want to talk about a gun rights dude? Oh, yeah. Did you see my video earlier today, Fierce Mouse? If not, I think you'll like it. 
well, shoot, all you guys are good gun guys. I just had to give a shout out to Fierce Mouse because he's been my buddy for a while. He's been busy lately. That's cool. I just kind of missed you, man. Now, the man you wish you were, he's literally the man you wish you were. I love your name, dude. I swear to God, I do. I'm not making fun of you at all. Ask Mateo. Like, literally, I've told Mateo outside of here, like, the man you wish you were, that name. Oh, man, like, I wish I could have taken that name. But it's his. He's already got it. <laughs> oh, Josh, you didn't even know who I was. That might have happened a few times, actually, for a few people. But maybe they'll find their way back, you know. But that, that's the risk. But here's the thing, guys. Like, Glock Shooter 79 was my regular YouTube account. It's all it was. Just like I ran around and just watched people's videos and stuff and was never going to really have like a content channel. And then I started making, making more videos. And I'm like, you know, people are going to think this is a Glock channel. It's not a Glock channel. I love Glocks though, but it's not a Glock channel. So I don't want to give people the wrong impression when they see, oh, Glock Shooter 79, let's go there. So that's why I you know, decided I'd change it something just a little more commensurate. Oh, I was the Red Yeti last year. Jeez, oh, Pete. Uh, multimedia Services, how's it going? He said, glad I found your channel. Love the reviews. Thank you very much. I, I like doing the reviews, too. I really, really do. Tactical Review, they unsub me from him. You know, I was a sub. See, me and him met, like, I think it was a Military Arms channel. We met a long time ago. Not, not like, super, super long, but it's been a while, you know. We met each other. We was BSing a little bit, and... Man, I'll hit you up. You hit me up. Okay, cool. He was just starting his channel. Like his first video was, I believe, inside your garage door. I can still remember it. And I watched his video and was subbed to him. And his content was a little slower at the beginning. And then once one at a certain point, I'm like, what happened to Tactical Reviews videos? Because he's coming in here quite a bit. And I'm looking there like, hmm. And after a while, if a guy hasn't does a video, you guys ever do this? You kind of go search for him. I searched for him. Oh, he's made five videos since I've seen him last. And subscribe was in red. So I'm like, subscribe. And then I sent him a message and was like, hey, man, had to resub to you. Do any of you guys ever have that happen? I have that. I've had that happen. And um, and I've also had it where I have the bell rang for a channel. And then all of a sudden, I don't have the bell rung for that person. So then I go manually ring it again. And then I have to, there's some channels, I don't know what it is. Like once every week I have to re-ring the bell. So dog dad, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I did. I just put out a video I'm excited about. It's going to come out sometime next week. And it's a cool little new gun. I'm pretty stoked about that. I released to all my Patreon supporters. Fierce mouse. He's a Patreon supporter. You it, didn't you? Man, I want to shout out my Patreon supporters. You know what I need to do? I need to send out, I'll send you guys all a message through Patreon. I want to shout you guys out, but then it's like your privacy. I'm real weird about that. So sorry, Fierce Mouse, if you didn't want me to shout you out. But there's a Patreon supporters literally like right here, and I'd love to sh shout you guys out. But is that me like I don't know. Just tell me, guys. I'm probably overthinking something that's stupid. I appreciate you guys. I know who you are. I'm looking at you guys. I want to, like, give your – um. I'm not going to give your real names out or anything. Some people just don't want people to know anything about them. And I'm big, big, big sticker for privacy. But, yeah, guys, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Dog Dad is right. You know, I, I am actually buying stuff. For myself, I love guns. I'll always own guns, but I have been buying stuff lately, literally just for the channel. So if you guys do have even an extra buck, buck, two bucks, five bucks, whatever a month, I could use it. And if you guys are appreciating my videos, I don't make really any money on this at all. I lose money. Let me take that back. I definitely don't make profit. The little, little, little bit I get from the ad revenue, trust me, it's nothing. But yeah, I, I buy stuff for the channel that hopefully people appreciate. You know, it wasn't a lot. 50 bucks, but I, I bought this literally for the channel. I would have never bought it completely for myself, but I've had about 100 people ask me about a little affordable light and laser that they could put on their G2C. So 
I definitely try to spend some money, you know, for the channel. And I probably don't need, like, quite all these Taurus guns, but I thought, well, you know, I have the G2C. I bought it for the channel, ended up completely loving it. Totally glad. Basically, people on here talked me into buying it. And then I said, well, there's a lot of guys talking about the G2S. So I went out and bought that. So, yeah. Thanks, Dog Dad, anyways. See, some people have just said right there they like being in the shadows, so. That's why I'm like, I don't shout people out, even though I'm like, Fierce Mouse, thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Oh, I should have not said that because he might, might, I don't, you guys know what I'm saying, whatever. He's like, man, my wife's listening. Now I got to take it back because she doesn't want me. <laughs> uh. um, oh, what was the price on it? This was right around... I think with tax, you know, about fifty. It was in the it was in the high forties, okay. So right around fifty bucks out the door, which is rather reasonable, right? But we will see. It almost seems too good to be true, but the views on this thing were like four and a half stars, okay. But yeah, for those of you that just came in, you know, that's this little little light. Green laser. Someone told me if you shine your camera with these lasers, it can mess it up. I don't know if that's true, but. And then the light. Around 50 bucks. Shout out to Poor Conservative. He's the one that helped all you guys out that are curious in this by telling me about it. I was struggling. Now, people had told me about a couple stream lights, but like I said, I don't really have a lot of money, and I bought this just for the channel. I didn't have enough money to buy a stream light just to see if it fit. But I was like, well, for 50 bucks, I think I can do it, you know. Somebody will appreciate it, hopefully. Brasters recommending the Taurus TX-22 16-shot 22. I've actually thought about them a decent amount. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I don't want this to completely just become the Taurus channel, though, because I'm having such a blast with these guns. But I like doing a lot of other stuff, too. It's kind of a fine line. I guess I have to clone myself and do a Taurus channel and then an everything else channel. Good night, dog dad. Thanks for the super chat again, man. That was awesome. I'll be talking to you soon, man. Um, Orion Fixer. There he is. How's it going, man? Let's see here. Um, yeah, Ramon Chavez. That was for the G2C, G2S. There's going to be a video on it. I'm sure this next coming up week. I want to talk to poor conservative though and see if he has time to do his video. If he has time to do his video first, that would be best. If he's not going to have time, I'll throw mine out first. Whatever. I'll talk to him on the side in the meantime. Um, okay. See, so, so Orion says his Tacticon 3X magnifier, not quite enough adjustment to focus. So yeah, we'll see. I'm going to mess around with this and see what happens. Sometimes it's a matter of you get what you pay for. Sometimes I bought expensive stuff and it didn't work as good as the cheap stuff. That's what really pisses you off, doesn't it? Was someone in here saying I don't really like Glocks at all? Who was it? The man you wish you were is like, you the man. Oh, the underfolder behind me. Yeah, this is my um, M64. Yugoslavian, Yugo. I actually talk about this gun in a video. If you guys are really into the Yugos, you can look it up. It's me doing that parts kit. So I was doing a Yugo milled parts kit, right, an M70. And then I also talked about this gun at a decent length. Speaking of milled guns, is there any guys that like AK still here? Uh, Smith fan. What's happening, Smith fan? You guys are like, we like living in the shadows. They're all going LOL. Oh, man. M4 Johnny, what's happening? Ooh, brought a man out one that had four and a half stars. Actually, Fiachi, or however you pronounce that, that's funny. Their representative just emailed me like the other day. You know how they do in their translated Chinese. Good sir, me pleasure to ask you. Love you long time. If you would let me send you free product for your review. 
So whatever. Yep, there you go. There you go. Josh Benware. I, he, that literally popped up right as I got done saying that. They sent me that same exact email that's clearly done through a translator, right? That's freaking hilarious. Right as I'm saying that, Josh pops up with it. Yeah, I got the same email. And the guy, it's weird. Like, he's totally talking through the translator. You can just tell, right, like how choppy it is? But he has, like, this American name, like, this is Tony with blah, 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 blah. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. But before I do, I'm going to show you guys real quick an AK to prove to you I really did bring a nice one to show you guys today. <coughs> Can I tell you guys a joke real quick? Now, here's the thing. It's only funny because it's true. So this guy strolls into one of my videos the other day. You can look it up. It's, I can't remember which one, but he strolls into the comments, right? And he says, hey, man, what the heck's up? Are Tauruses the only guns you own? And I was just like, Ugh. And I'm like, Ch -ch -ch. that's cute. So they say I don't have any AKs. They said Tauruses are the only guns I own, so. Whew, I couldn't believe that one. You know what's funny? Do any of you guys with channels ever run into this crap? Some guy will come in your channel and literally say something like, what the heck, man, blah, 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 blah. You know, is this the only gun you own, or do you even have any guns, or what? I don't care, first of all. No one needs to know whether I own any of these or not. But they'll sit there, and they'll tell you something, right? But they've never even watched one freaking video. This guy's like, why are you doing a video on the G2S? You should have got a G2C. That's another completely true comment. I'm like, did you watch the video yesterday that showed the G2C or like the 17 other ones that are on my Taurus playlist? They literally have enough effort to run into your channel and be like, dude, you're the biggest idiot ever for buying that G2S without buying a G2C. I'm just like, street lights are on, run along, go home, go home. Don't get grounded, kid. It's just funny. But anyways, it, I'm saying it as a joke. It didn't get me mad, but it's like, yeah, dude. I own one Taurus gun. It's a G2S. I've never even heard of the G2C. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you guys ever seen one of these? So I'm going to do the Hungarians, right? Start talking about Hungarian AKs here soon. And I thought I'd start right at the beginning. This is what we won't see too often. Misha's done videos on it. Maybe a couple other people, but yeah. You guys can guess what this is, okay? And I'll be right back in five minutes. It does come from Hungary. No, it's not Hungary. It's Hungary. These were all like that from the original kit. These are common, actually. I've seen quite a few Hungarians with that. It's a pretty clean one, guys. I got a couple of these, a few of these. I thought I'd bring the nicest one in to do a video on, but yeah, this is an old one. They don't, these haven't been brought into the country for a while. I will be right back because I really do have some cool stuff to show you guys. So don't let me forget. I wanted to show you some stuff with this too. So.
All right, I'm back. <clears throat> the man you wish you were. I completely love it. I love everything about it. When this stream's over tonight, I am going to buy my third Polish Tokarev. That's how much I love it, okay? What are you guys doing here? Oh, boy. They're doing the wave, guys. They're doing the... Look, there's 28 people in here right now. There was almost 50 at one time. I've got 32 thumbs up. So if one of you guys actually like it, don't forget to give me the thumbs up because there's people in every stream, no matter who they are, they love it. They love it more than anyone, but they still give it a thumbs down because I don't know why. I don't really care. So give me a thumbs up if you guys are in the stream. I can't say it's a lot of hard work because I actually – probably enjoy it more than you guys do because I'm just hanging out with you guys. But, you know, I try to put a little effort into it. But, yeah, I'm going to start off talking about this, which was how the AK got started in Hungary, started it all. This is an AK-55. I'm sure somebody guessed that right off the bat. Hungarian Type 3, known as the AK-55. This is specifically an SLR-100H. So... This is something that Arsenal imported. You guys heard of Arsenal AKs? This is back in the very, very beginning of Arsenal. This is back when we could still have original barrels. This is the original barrel kit. Okay? So this has a lot of original parts that they just can't bring in the country anymore. But this is very, very early Arsenal. Smooth as a butt, really. Nice gun. So video on that. And I can get into some of the other Hungarians, but... I kind of thought you start with this. And I'll also show you guys the other gun I'm going to show when I do this video to show you guys like Hungary kind of stepped it up. So this is AK-55. Remember that. As in like 1955. And I'm going to show you what Hungary was running around with in 1953. In one second here. They had, you know, Mosin the Gant carbines. I don't know if we can. Uh, it's going to be hard for it to focus on that right now, I think. But, yeah, 1953 date. It's got the famous 02. You'll find almost all Hungarian guns have the 02 on them. That was kind of their little proof mark they like to use. But, yeah, this is a nice old Hungarian M44. Basically a clone of the Russian M44 carbine version of the Mosin they got. So they went from the M91, shortened it down to the 9130. Then they shortened them down even further and added these side folding gizmos here. I'm calling it a gizmo as a social experiment because last time I said the name of what this was, YouTube demonetized. Now, when I say demonetized, you guys that have channels know what I'm talking about. It's not that you're worried about the 26 cents you would have made, but when it's demonetized, that means it's undesirable. So they put it down at the very, very, very bottom of the search where like people can barely, barely find it. But yeah, 1953, Hungry, M44, Mosin. 1955, they had that real deal guy over there. Nothing against these weapons, nothing at all. I'm just showing you how much they advanced in two short years, right? Kind of cool, huh? All right. I have like five more things to show you guys, and I've been out in almost two hours. So I'm just going to do a lightning round, just teasers of what some upcoming videos are going to be, all right? Now, this is a gun I've talked about before. I think Matt Morrison and probably Brastard and a couple guys like that. Cave Dave will remember me talking about this. This is some old school history right here. This is another AK. It's not Hungarian, but you don't see these too much either. This is, in more than one ways, associated with the old Arsenal out of Texas. This is an old Armory USA build. Why will it not show up? Armory USA. 
You guys, anyone know about them? SSR 85C-2. So for some of you AK nuts, you guys might know what this is. You might not. This. <laughs> that AK-55 over there was smooth. This is literally the smoothest AK. Not only that I own, but I've ever even touched. Can you guys hear that? Even in slow motion. You know, normally all AKs hitch. Not, I mean, this thing's like, it's got its own unique stamp receiver. Like, this is pretty cool. So, Armory USA. Anyone heard of those guys? Or do you remember them? All right, I've asked you guys a couple questions. Let me go down here and see if anyone had any answers. Um, let's see here. I'll keep going. None of this quickie stuff. Well, a lot. Of, I'm just reading the chat here. It says it's trying to reconnect me. Um, let me know if I'm still there. Okay, I'm back. I just sent this message across. The, I just seen a lot of people saying good night, and I don't want to keep you guys up all night if you're. I'll get tired. Okay, you still see me. Thanks, Mac. Um, Beretta Model 81s. For all you Beretta Model 81 guys, okay? Beretta Man, if you're listening, you still here? Bre there you are, Beretta Man. Don't leave me, Beretta Man. Don't leave me, man. I need you, buddy. Okay. The Model 81 Beretta. I did a video on it a while ago. I went out and took footage of it shooting. I don't know if something happened to it. I can't find the footage. So I'm going to have to take it out to shoot it again, but the cool thing about the Beretta 81s is they're like a little over 200 bucks. The problem is Beretta stopped making mags for them. Like they're not making them from what I've heard they're going to make anymore. Now it's kind of a ripoff, but if you want another mag, Classic has these. And I'm not even endorsing them because you guys know I've had good luck with them. I've had bad luck with them, right? You know, these guys right here, okay? They're the only place I know of right now on the primary market. They're 35 bucks a piece, so I grabbed two. I did feel like they were a little high, but if you look, these just came in today. These are brand new, and I love my Beretta 81 so much, and it's such a pleasure to shoot. And like I said earlier, I'm bummed out you guys haven't got to see the part two yet because I was really excited about making it, but I can't find the shooting footage. Like I know it was on the card. I know what hard drive. I don't know what happened to it. I think that that little brat up there. I think this is what happened, okay? This little, not this brat, the brat that used to own this. Some, something happened to the files, okay? Anyways, if you guys want Beretta 81 mags, I'm just looking out for you. They're 35 bucks. Before they got these back in, I was seeing these starting to go for 65, 70 bucks a piece on Gun Broker. So just a shout out to any 81 guys. I hate to like tell you to go panic buy. That's not the point, but I grabbed two just because I love that little gun so much. Jeremy Wilson's out of here, man. Nice to see you, buddy. I hope everything's going good. Send me an IG message later and let me know how your family's doing. I didn't really. I hope you guys are doing good, okay, Jeremy? I really do. God bless you and especially your wife, man. Tree guy, you were supposed to remind me. You didn't remind me, man. Give me one second. I'll go grab it in one second, the saws, because I definitely want to show it to you. Okay, so Beretta 81 mags. They are available for probably a limited time. Then you'll have to get scalped on Gun Broker afterwards. So, yeah, the real deal PSLs, I know. Well, I already had a PSL, and I couldn't see in the picture close enough. that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Explicit. Where's the chick that used to own the llama? I don't know. I've been told a lot of girls lay in bed and watch this stream. I don't know why they do. I'm just, it's what I've been told before. Um, let's see here. How do you pronounce your name? Aunt Diesel, A-N-T-Z-L-V-I-Z-I-O-N. Welcome to the channel, man. Glad to see you here. Just found the channel two days ago. That's about the time Brastard started following this channel was two days ago. Is that right? 
Good to have you here, man. I wasn't ripping on you. I was ripping on Brastard. Trust me. He knows. I, that's the thing, Brastard. I thought they were totally lying, too. Totally. So, Nagant Revolver. Again, I got to go quick, guys. I got a little cool stuff here. Yeah, you know, like Mateo said, sometimes you have to replace them with a, um, a younger model. Actually, you know what? I think I pretty much almost got that worked out, quite frankly. So, yeah, this is an old one, guys. This is a CCCP marked 1926. Refurbishment mark. They did a nice job, though. This is an arsenal refurbished, you know, refurbished by the Soviets at a certain point. It's a nice old honest gun, though. It's got the correct wood grips and wood backstrap, which would be correct for this era in 31. These are pretty unique guns. You know, they're a gas-sealed revolver. So I don't know if you guys have my camera pick it up, but see the, the cone right there? Now watch. When I cock it, it moves forward. It not only rotates it, but it moves forward at the same time, right? So watch that again. Can you guys see the little gap in between the cylinder right there? I'm going to cock the hammer. Double action. Let me try to get that in there. It rotates and moves forward. So this is one of the few revolvers. Don't do this to really any other revolvers, right? Taurus PT-1895. Josh, there you go. Because he's right. All I have is Taurus's. Taurus PT 1895. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna get Benware in two seconds because he thinks he's got me, but I'm going to get him. Watch this, guys. Hold on. So this is one of the few revolvers. Now, for you guys that are new to revolvers, don't normally do this. Normally, if you try to shoot a revolver like a semi-auto, I don't know why you want to. I'm just saying. You're actually going to be just fine. There's zero gas that escapes the cylinder of this. And... If you would want to do it, you could suppress it. Yes. Yep. Like Johnny Powell said. How's it going, Johnny Powell? Rockford Ordinance. What's happening, Rockford? Yeah, Rockford's right. They didn't actually lie. They just probably broke the law. But that law is stupid anyways. All semi-auto AKs should be able to have a safety seer in them, right? Or a retarder. I mean, they should all be able to have that anyways. So whatever. And then I have a couple accessories for the gun, too. Here's a nice surplus Soviet holster. It's got that, that faux pig skin. It looks like pig skin, you know, like your football, right? But it's actually kind of a plother. But the Soviets used these for many, many decades. You've got your cleaning rod. And I also have the famous screwdriver. That's what was issued with these. And I know this is kind of me getting dorky, but hey, I'm, I kind of love no serps if you guys didn't know yet. I just picked this up the other day, an original lanyard loop for it. Now, would I really run around shooting with this lanyard loop? No, but this isn't a gun I'm going to, quote, run around with anyways, right? I just like it. So I've got my lanyard loop right here on the bottom of the revolver, and there we go. So I can put this on my belt. It's long enough to fire, and if I drop it, I guess I'll be able to just drag it behind me as I'm retreating because if this is the only gun you have, you might win the fight, but you'll probably need to find your best path for retreat too, okay? So, yeah. Now, with this whole gas sealed thing, there's a unique ammunition too. And they give you a spot for the pouch right here in the pouch. Look at that. A handy-dandy spot for a box of ammo. So, I brought a couple boxes here just to show you guys. I'm literally going to do the video on this gun because I got the lanyard loop for it. Or the lanyard, rather. So, here's some original. Russian surplus, Nagat revolver rounds from way back in the day. This is some pretty old stuff. And let me take a peek. This box looks like it's been open. Show you guys how the rounds look. So they're packaged in small, 14 count boxes. And you can put two boxes in your, in your pouch, right? Now, these guns aren't the fastest guns to load, guys. Okay. 
But yeah, seven shot revolver. So they package it nice and convenient. Two reloads in a box, right? And the actual ammunition itself, if you notice, the bullet does not stick out of the case. So when you first look at this, you think it's just a spent case, right? Nope. The bullet is recessed. And that is help, that's what helps with the final gas seal, if you will. So, isn't that pretty cool? This bullet design, bullet slash cartridge, you know, case design, combined with the cylinder moving board, makes this a sealed revolver. Perfectly safe to shoot it with a thumbs forward shooting position, right? Now, these guns are really cool. They're awesome. It's kind of an anemic round, though, guys. The 7.62 by 38R is not even close to a 38 Special. But I still wouldn't want to get shot by one, as the old saying goes. Chuck Kaplan, what's happening? Never seen that before. Yeah, they are definitely unique, aren't they? Definitely unique. Yeah. <laughs> Rockford Ordnance. Yeah, you want to retreat at an expedited pace. That's bad when it's you versus the guy with the 380. And then the Gaunt Revolver guy might want to run from this. I mean, I, I, I'd run from any gun if I was unarmed. So I'd really, really rather have that Nagant than nothing. But you guys know what I'm saying. All right. I'm going to get Benware right here because Benware wants to know what model Taurus Revolver it is. He doesn't think I'm going to be able to produce a revolver. But that's where he was wrong. So hold on. Anyone ever heard of this one before? Speaking of 38 Specials, the Taurus, Model 85. Kind of an old classic Taurus, right? I've had this gun for a few years. I still like to carry it, but at one time I thought I was going to carry it. And then I, eh, I don't know. I don't hate the gun or anything. I've just decided not to carry it. But yeah. Here's a Taurus revolver. Um, yeah, the trigger pull is terrible, okay? <laughs> Explicit. The guy has a warehouse behind him. <laughs> now, this is just the stuff I bring up to my shop for videos and stuff. I'm definitely not at my house right now. Now, this has the, look at this, the firing pin right on the hammer. Really shouldn't be dry firing these guys, but yeah, the... Oh, the trigger pull on this is, I don't want to completely pull it and have it slam forward. You know what I'm saying? But the double action is not the best on these. It's way, way, way up there. You know what I mean? Well, you know what I'm saying, Josh. You, you said, what model Taurus is that? Which was funny. And then I said, nah, I can't let him completely get by with that kind of BS. Uh, Ugh. <laughs> And no, I'm not showing off. This is a pretty cheap gun. Um, who, who said that explicit? Yeah, these are kind of a, on the cheaper side of things. Beretta Man has his screen spinning. Does that mean that you might be buffering on your end? I'm not sure. The Taurus Tracker. You want to get with um, poor conservative on? Um, you have these, don't you? Poor conservative, the 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 Taurus revolvers, or are you more of a Smith revolver guy? Benware is more of a Smith guy, right? I don't know. Remind me, poor conservative. Poor conservative's got so many guns, I can't keep track of all of them. No, actually, it, it just came to me. Poor conservatives running around with the Smith 600 series, like a 629 or something, aren't you? That's right. Um, I'm good now. Okay. I grabbed a couple of these. Remember last week I grabbed a couple of those so-called Gen 2 IO mags, right? We got like a foot of snow last week, guys. Did you know that? That's why I'm like 
kind of behind on getting out to shoot because I plow snow for a living. It's like totally not supposed to happen this early in the year, but we got hit. So I bought these cheap mags, right? Basically the IO ink mags. They call them the Pioneer Polish. They're, yeah, they're from the town of Radon, but the Pioneers, right? Five bucks. And then I thought I'd try my hand at a couple of these AC Unity mags. Why not? They do have the steel log on the rear and on the front. I know a famous YouTuber did a video on these and they completely failed. Um, not going to argue with him, but I want to try it on my own because, quite frankly, the guy that had these instantly fail. Now, look, they could instantly fail on me too, but he apparently has the worst luck of any YouTuber in the world because everything this man's had on his channel for like months now has failed instantly when he tests it. So not that I don't trust him. I'm just saying I'm going to try these on my own. So these were on sale for eight bucks. And if you guys mess around with these Bosnian AC Unity mags, they might be pieces of crap. Again, I don't know. I'm just going to test them myself before I only go by somebody's video who everything he touches is the worst thing ever and it breaks every time he touches it. So, but he has like 998,000 subs more than me. So I'm not calling him out. I'm just literally saying, I don't know. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Ooh, slammed the snow up in Alaska. That might be more. See, we're in Michigan. It's not supposed to snow that much December 12th. Or I'm not sorry. December 12th. Yeah. November 12th. <laughs> I got all tongue tied. Yeah. Best way to go, try it yourself, then make a decision. Exactly, exactly. But they look good, and they were on sale for, I'm sorry, this size right here was 9 bucks. The slightly shorter size was 8 bucks. And trust me, I know what size this is. I'm trying social experiments, trust me. But, yeah, they seem pretty cool, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try them out. I bought... um. Since they were so cheap, I bought three of them. And I'm probably going to take one and kind of bang it around and knock it around some and sacrifice it if it breaks or gets whatever. And then hopefully, you know, if, if this one, I'm not going to do a crazy torture test, but I'm going to beat it up. And if this one still holds up good, then hopefully I'll have these two left for myself, right? Ooh, Rockford Ordinance, what gun are you? What gun do you have, man? You're trying to figure it out. He's got the Ruger L LRC. LC. He's got the LCR. I'm just messing with you, man. Josh Benware, that sounds like you got some Smiths. And poor conservative. Smith & Wesson must make a good revolver. Everyone's already done them all, but I can do a Smith & Wesson revolver video, guys, if you want me to. I might have a Smith at home. Johnny Powell, do I have a Fleur de Lis sticker for it? <laughs> no, but I do have... Okay, this is for Johnny Powell. What's happening, Gun Squawk 44? I'm going to take a wild guess here, but I don't know. Gun Squawk might like himself a 629 or something. I don't know. Maybe it's the 44 on his name? I'm not sure. What do you think? Place your bets. Does Gun Squawk like the 44 Magnum or, or what? Okay, hold on. Somebody was talking about a Bosnian 2 rip Magnum. I was going to bring the mag, but I just thought I'd bring the whole gun with me here. I'm 72 AB1. Underfolder Yugo RPK. These are kind of cool. And this is a real one, too. I know some people done conversions the detachable bipod on the front with the spring-loaded button. 
But yeah, this is not a fleur de lis like you were saying, uh, Johnny, but pretty close, right? Croatian, Bosnian, people call them both, two rib. So yeah. So I guess, really, these are kind of from the same heritage, right? Uh-oh, Rockford Ordnance, head-to-head, M72 AB1 against the Romanian paratrooper. Yeah, my paratrooper is back there, but it's still in parts kit form. I've not built my, my Romanian RPK paratrooper. But I do have a Romanian, um, a non-paratrooper RPK built. And then I've got a regular M72B1 over there. But I always kind of like these. But yeah, I know what you're saying, Rockford Ordnance. Side folder versus under folder, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The true AB1s have the detachable bipod. And that's like the impossible part to get unless you actually had an AB1 uh, kit. Um, Seth is asking, how's it going, Seth? What's happening, man? He says... Quick question, is the M70B1 milled receiver different than the M72B1? So are you talking, see, here's the thing. So here's an M72B1 that's of the stamped variety. Here's a, a barrel trunnion here and sight assembly I have. Or are you talking about the milled one? I do not have any milled M72 um, RPKs, so... I do have an M70, though. I do have an M70 parts kit right behind me that I did a video on a couple months ago. I'm going to say it's probably not exactly the same, but I could look it up. I'm not sure. I have quite a few of the Yugos, but I do not have a milled Yugo RPK. But yeah, it's got the UR and J selector markings on it right there. And I don't know if with this bipod if I'm going to be able to get it this close, but eh, probably not. Oh, you can see it right there. See the trunnion right up front by the panel, M72. It focused for just a split second, too. M72 AB1. There you go, right there. M72 AB1. And I found all of the AB1s that I've seen documented pictures of, which is like three of them, they all do happen to be made right within the serial number range. Like they're between like 11,000 and 13,000 serial number and generally 1984. Like anyone really wanted to know that. I'm boring you guys. So, yeah. Yeah. How many AKs do I have? That's a good question. Okay. More than I need, but not as many as I want. Is that a good answer? Definitely not as many as I want. But yeah, I love the Yugos, guys. I did a Yugo AK stream like, like nine months ago. Does anyone remember that? Where I literally brought out like 25 different Yugo AKs. I feel like I should redo some of those streams, you know, because a lot of newer people have never even seen those before. Max says, let me guess three. Yeah, the paratroopers usually are 89. Well, I've showed you four so far today, Mac. Okay. I showed you one, two, and then that Hungarian, and then that Bulgarian. So I've showed you four today. So I will tell you it's over three. <laughs> Okay. Only one more, Dave says. Yeah, I know. I only need one more. I only need one more.
We are Ninja Scout, yes. But those serial numbers, here's what's interesting about it. Those serial numbers are on the Trunion, right? So that actual gun being made on a USA receiver, these are no longer the – that's a good point, Ninja. I know where you're coming from. And Rockford's right, too. They already know them, okay? So this is no longer the legal serial number, though, right? So underneath, like on that gun I just showed you, and I didn't show that part, that's where – the actual builder in this country had to put their maker's mark. So my real serial number is down under here. These are just, you know, I mean, they're real serial numbers. And the fact that that kit matches makes that gun like really cool. But for legal purposes, these no longer become serial numbers anymore. Does that make sense? Uh-oh, someone just lost them all on a boating accident again. And they're like, yeah, but there's no like lake within a thousand miles of you, sir. Well, I lost them anyways. Even though I'm sure a lot of you guys live right by the lake. I actually live right on the lake, guys, if you could believe it. Waterfront property, but I don't even have a boat. Can't afford a boat. I'd have to sell some of my AKs to buy a boat. And Well, you know what boat stands for, right? B-O-A-T is an acronym. Break out another thousand. They're expensive. I can't afford a boat. Johnny Powell, did I match the new number to the old? Maybe, but not exactly, okay? Usually there's like a little prefix or something. I can't give out all my serial numbers on here now because the government has no idea what I own. Here's what's cool. We should want the government to know what we own. Back to that whole tyranny thing I was talking about earlier, when the government fears the people versus the people fearing the government. But it is nice to have a few things squirreled away. You know what I'm saying? Seth, you go AKs look a lot more well-constructed, in my opinion, nicer than some of the other countries. Look, they're really good, and they're amongst my favorites. You know, they really are. And they just have so many interesting variants. But I can't say the, they are, like, the favorite or my favorite because I like so many of them so much. Okay, here's something else I wanted to tease for you guys just a little bit. I was supposed to be doing a lightning round, and then I ended up. Uh, Gun Squawk. I did a video for that Beretta rifle that looks like a Garand. That was on a video just last week. So go back and check out the channel. There's a completely standalone where I talked about it for quite a while, and I even had the Garand in there for reference. So anybody, anybody that wants to see more about that Beretta, it doesn't have a lot of views on it. Which I found that out, you know, if you put a video up that's like a little bit more expensive gun or rare gun, it usually doesn't get as many views. But I guess I hope that there's somebody out there that really likes it enough to make it worth my time, you know. Um, yeah, you get flagged on border states. Yeah, boats are holding the water you pour money into. All right. You guys, anyone know what this is? I'm going from commie guns to good old U.S. of A. See the old U.S. on here? I'll give you guys a hint. Whatever this goes to, this is an original one. There's no gun in it. Just showing you the holster. Does anyone know what this would be for? Any old school people in the house? I think they still had these. I think they still had these when Poor Conservative was in. I'm assuming they did. They had them all the way up until, well, maybe not quite when Poor Conservative was in. He's not quite that old. But no, for real, guys, they did have these all the way up into the 80s. Boats are holes in the water you put guns into. Yep, 1911s. It does look like one of the old black powder ones, though, Rockford. I hear you on that. But, no, this is a USGI 1911. The specific one is World War II period. But they used holsters that looked a lot like these. Now, once you got to, like, Vietnam and all that, they changed them to, like, the black color. There's a bunch of different ones. But, yeah. Now, this one isn't, like, a real collector's one. It doesn't have the little braided tassel that comes from the bottom. But it does have the hanger on the back. And this specific one is, it says U.S. Warren Leather. 
Warren Leather Goods. So if you look that company up, you'll see Warren Leather Goods was one of the official suppliers to the United States during World War II. And that's what this would, that's what this would fit. So I'm showing you guys the holster because there's going to be a gun that fits in this holster coming up on a video soon. So I don't want to show the gun, even though it's sitting right next to me because I want to do an unboxing. And if I do an unboxing here, then they'll say, well, it wasn't a real unboxing, right? Not that I really care what they say, but you guys know what I'm saying. I, the truth is I'd show it to you guys, but it's already been two hours and 20 minutes. So, Okay. One more thing. Today was a good week as far as me finding all this weird crap I've been looking for for the longest time. A Taurus PT 1911. I have a book I want to show you guys, okay? And there's probably only a couple of you guys geeky enough to like this, but maybe a lot of you do. I don't know. Any of you guys like these right here? So I don't know if you guys know about this book, but this book's kind of like out of print and it can be hard to find. Like on Amazon, they want like 100 bucks for this book. Well, I found it on eBay. And I'm just sharing with you guys. They still have some. If you guys are interested, this book is available on eBay right now. The title's right there on the screen. And this was like $25 plus 15 shipping. And as you can see, it's still shrink-wrapped. So if you're into these, then from what I've been told, this book is like V1 to have. So I'm going to real quick just break the plastic and open it up here. If it's interesting enough, I may do a quick book review video. I know Ian from Forgotten Weapons does those. I've always kind of wanted to do like a few book reviews though, you know? I've really... Not not exactly like he does. He's just the only channel I can think of that's done like a number of book reviews. But yeah, it's definitely hardcover. Uh, Martin G. Ivy. And again, I'm trying to help you guys out if you're really into this. Do your own research, but these for 25 bucks plus 15 shipping is kind of a steal. And whenever this seller sells out what they have, you could literally expect for these to be well over a hundred dollars. That's what I've noticed, anyways. So I'm noticing right off the bat here. The pictures aren't the best, best, but the pictures are definitely doable. And the paper is very thick, glossy paper. Like the paper's almost I mean, it's almost thick enough to be cardstock. Very, very nice, high-gloss paper. So the quality of the book looks really good. And what I'm liking here is they're actually telling you everything about it. So, you know, figure 33 shows the front of the hanger with the keeper fastened and shows a small rectangular protrusion. So they're literally telling you, like, this is a very similar method used on one variation of the East German. So it sounds like it's not just – even though the pictures aren't, like, super, super high quality – they're good enough, but it looks like there's a lot of, you know, description to go with the pictures. So from what I'm seeing here on every page, the text is actually giving you all the info that you would want. And the pictures are kind of just to corroborate the text. I mean, we have whole pages here. So this is supposed to be, again, you know, I'm, I'm not going to like completely, you know, give this thing a full review because I just opened it. But from what I understand... This is supposed to be the most comprehensive book on, on these. So, Is anyone else interested in these, or did I just bore everybody and make you go to sleep? I know it's late. I actually get into that kind of stuff where I could sit here and say, well, okay, there's the Polish. I would go through here and I'd find the Russian one, right? Bulgarian. You know, I'd say, well, let's find, you know, say I want to know about this one. I'd get this out and I'd sit there and I'd I'd go through till I found the, I don't think this is the exact right one, even though I might have got lucky, but you know what I'm saying? Looks like this book will tell me everything about this one, for example. Yeah. All right, 
anyone that's interested, did you guys get that info? If you want to eBay it, it's right here on the screen. You can come back and watch it later. Just trying to help you out. If there's a nerd out here like me, by far the best way to best price to get this book. I've wanted it for like two years until I saw this listing pop up. They were like a hundred bucks and I wasn't going to do that, but I thought for 40 and so far initial impressions. I'm glad. I think I got my $40 worth. Oh, look at this. This is cool. For you real nerds out there, look at that. All the blueprints and schematics, and that's pretty cool. Have you ever seen someone do all the call-outs and do CAD drawings-type blueprints of bayonets? Nice. All right, I'm going to take a peek at the chat here one last time. I'm going to be getting off in a minute. I've gone well over two hours. Do a book review on the Federalist Papers. I actually would do that. Do you think anyone would watch that? I guess it doesn't matter if too many people watches. I'd rather have a couple of cool people watch. <laughs> Dauntless Defense, a good day for me is home at the range. Shooting's much better exercise than running. Ooh, RIA 10 millimeter Ninja Scout's talking about. Ninja, I responded back to you in a comment. I don't know if you saw it, but did you see that VZ58 Armorer's Chest that Centerfire sold? Like, I got the email for it, and it was a one of one, and it sold out. That thing was freaking crazy. It was a chest that had, like, a replacement barrel, like, a bunch of butt stocks, the folding stocks, every part, carriers, just everything. It was freaking crazy, man. Beretta APX with the 15 round mags, Gun Squawk says. That's pretty nice. 221 rounders, overkill? Nah. I mean, unless it's hurting your back to carry it, no. Do the Federalist Papers review. What about the Anti Federalist Papers? Do I have to do that too? Um, Glock 42, not bad. Not bad at all. That's a 380. Pretty small little gun. Well, you know, I carry a 9mm as my primary carry, but I kind of showed this earlier. This is in my pocket. Since I'm just sitting here inside, I've got my primary carry sitting literally right there, okay? They're like, like 8 inches off screen, like right next to my camera. And then this is just in my pocket where it always is. This is a little 380. Caltech P380. So I believe in this round enough to trust my life with it, but it's not the only gun I carry either. But if I thought it was worthless, why even carry it as a backup? So that's just my opinion. Okay, the G3, guys, real quick, I got to tell you, there's probably no one in here that was asking me. Everyone wants to know about a holster from this gun. I have a Kydex holster. Handmade by a company here in Michigan. I have one on my way to my house. I'm supposed to get it this weekend. So I'm definitely hoping I get it in time to put out a review next week. So if you guys are looking for a Kydex holster for the Taurus G3 that's specifically made for the G3, I know you can kind of shove them into a G2C holster, but they don't fit 100%. They, they work good enough, but not really. I'm going to have a true G3 holster on the channel. So if there's anyone you know, looking forward to that, Definitely, definitely check out the channel next week. I'm going to have a G3. A G3 specific holster that I'm pretty excited about because the company that I'm having make it for me has a pretty good reputation and they've got a pretty cool Instagram. But I'll be sharing all their info in that video for sure. Gunsquark says the one I talked him into. It is. It's for the money too, you know. I mean... It's weird. It's like for the money, but then I start comparing it even to guns that cost way more. And it still is like beating some of them, though. That's what's kind of crazy about this. People have said the Glock 19 holster is pretty good. Well, check out my video next time, Gun Squawk. Maybe you'll like it. I'm going to try it out anyways and see what I think. But yeah, a purpose built holster for this is coming up very soon. Oh, you wanted one of the um, Ninja Scout saying he wanted one of those years ago, but didn't get one when they were $2.99. Yeah, there's like 20 mags in there. I didn't get one either.
The G3 is nice. And I love my G2C too, guys. What's so cool about having both, though, is that mag interchangeability, right? Thanks to Bloody Wheels and his awesome spacers, you can just go back and forth. I'm sorry, these aren't for sale yet. But these are. The black spacers. I'm just messing with you guys. I'm just messing with you, but I'm being dead serious, too. These are the only ones that are available. These actually really aren't, but... Uh. Somebody said 25. Now, 25 ACP, I didn't know we were talking about that. 25 ACP is probably the most powerful round. The only reason I don't carry it is just too much recoil. I don't want to break my wrist. I mean, 25 ACP center fire, so I don't know, man. Don't know if I could quite handle that. Um, let's see who else is in here. Do any of you guys like Polish Tokarevs? Classic's got Polish Tokarevs for 250, which is pretty awesome. I'm gonna show one earlier to the man you wish you were, and he's probably been in better hours now, hasn't he? 25 ACP, boys. Just make sure you got a full handle on it. Here's a Polish Tokarev. 762 by 25. These haven't been imported in quite a while. I don't know how they've got them for only 250. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, here's what a Polish Tokarev looks like. You'll see it has the Russian. The Russian style, the Russian wartime, rather. Style cocking serrations, the wider ones. So that's going to differentiate it from like a Romanian, for example, right away. Eight rounds. So not quite as long, not quite as much capacity as a Yugo. If I was only to buy one toker of just for a shooter, I'd probably buy a Yugo M57, right, for 200 bucks on there. But if you're into the Polish ones, the Polish are really nice. 250 I mean, this one... I had a plug made for the safety that they add after import. They're not supposed to have a safety. They just do it for import. But you can put a plug in there and get rid of it. But, yeah, Polish Tokarev. I thought I'd show you guys that real quick. Circle 11, raid right on Poland. Probably one of the highest quality firearms manufacturers of all time. This is the actual real Polish raid I'm here, Circle 11. Unlike those Pioneer mags I was showing you there. That's a totally separate company in the town of Radom. So, yeah. Ooh, that, that Canica Elite, you blew the green Cerakote right off of it. Factory finish, too. See, that's what I was wondering. I was just talking to someone about that, man. Uh, good night, Dauntless Defense. We were just talking about some of the um, Cerakote they've used. Good night, Dauntless. Nice to see you, buddy. The G3 and stainless. You know, they might come out with that. Do they have that yet? I haven't seen a stainless yet. I bought it when they said you can have it in any color you want as long as it's black. They say they're going to fix it. Jeez, oh, Pete. Now, what about the Cancerico that they put on, like, the SFX where they parkerize it and then put the... Supposedly upgraded. Do you guys have any experience with that? The, the newer, like, better Cerakote? Yep. Like Mateo was saying, Cerakote over parkerizing to make the finish last longer. Exactly. And Mateo brought this up, too. The, 20, the 25 NAA is a nice little round. I'd put that 25 NAA up near a Tokarev round. Would you, Brastard? The 32 N and the 32 NAA for sure. So there are some 25 ACP fans in here. 25 NAA fans. Yeah. Rockford Ordinance, it looks like, likes it. He's talking about how fast it goes. Um, the Tokarevs are a classic. 250 bucks for the Polish ones, Rockford Ordinance, which is, is a really fair deal. The last time I saw them coming to the country was around probably four or five years ago, and they wanted like 350 for them back then. Guns are in the tank right now, guys. They're really, really cheap. This is the cheapest I've seen guns in ammo for a long, long time. 
And that sucks because they're such good prices. You don't save any money. You just end up spending the same and getting more stuff, right? All right, guys. I've been on here a while. Um, just checking one last time here. Chuck Kaplan said I should do a book club, uh, book club channel. <laughs> I should. Whole new channel, the book club channel. I do, I do like books. I really do. All right, guys. Everyone's getting tired. I'm pretty tired too, so I'm going to get off here. Um, I guess I showed you guys teasers for probably the next couple weeks worth of videos, really, but I plan on doing videos about quite of this stuff we were talking about. So I'm going to get off here. Like Benware said, ammo is always cheap when a Republican's in office. And Tree Guy, you forgot to remind me, but I think I'm going to do a little standalone video on these couple saws. So stay tuned. I think you guys are going to see a little chainsaw video. And it's not just for Tree Guy, but it's especially for him because I don't know. I like these little saws. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. Pittsburgh Carry, good night. And good night to the rest of you guys. Take it easy. All right. Thanks for watching and have a good one.